you, David. Hey, Josh, just want to give you a heads up. We are about to do our big loop comp config, but we're currently working through some issues. Um, we're looking into it uh, on board station, and it'll be about 10 minutes until we have a status update for you. Okay, copy that. Thanks. All right, so starting off strong, right yeah. off the back. Right in the middle of the action. <laughs> Live view there of SpaceX Mission Control, uh, just right behind us, actually. Um, just some back and forth between the crew and the core. Um, and actually, right now, all four astronauts um, are in Dragon Endeavor, uh, and we are getting ready for the uh, approach initiation burn uh, as they make their way to the International Space Station. That's right, and uh, in fact, we're uh, very close to the International Space Station at this point. This is actually one of the final burns that gets us into that approach ellipsoid, and that's really where joint operations begin with the International Space Station. That communication we heard right off the top of our broadcast today uh, was the, uh, the Capcom in Mission Control Houston talking with Josh Cassida, one of the NASA astronauts aboard uh, the International Space Station. Uh, that big loop configuration is a communications loop that includes uh, the International Space Station, uh, the crew aboard the Crew-6 Dragon, as well as the control rooms in Houston for the Na uh, International Space Station, as well as here in, here in Hawthorne with the Dragon teams. We're now less than a minute away, actually, from uh, the initiation of that approach initiation burn. It's about a 90 second burn and again it's a very important burn that gets us into the approach ellipsoid and officially begins those joint operations. The teams across the board at this point have already pulled go, go so we're just going to stand by and wait for that go uh, for the approach initiation. You can see they've been making incremental boosts Houston over the past 24 two hours for one uh, to four, get up to this one, point, 7 kilometers seven, away. Three. Control F8 was not required to get to uh, the correct reference frame. Uh, that actually took me to the wrong reference frames. Okay, Josh, we copy and we'll make the update for future rest. All right, and while that communication was underway, we did get confirmation the AI burn has started. The clock is no starting now sure 90 seconds. That's certainly great news. Um, now, as you saw in that graphic just moments ago, uh, and as Gary was saying, there have been a number of burns and maneuvers performed up until this point. And as of right now, as Gary just confirmed, we began that approach initiation, which is the blue box, the first blue box on the left. So we can think of this as Dragon began its journey with liftoff yesterday, or actually technically today at 12.34 a.m. Right. <laughs> Eastern time, <That's> right. <laughs> yesterday for us Pacific Coast folks. <laughs> um, and it, so it kind of like the, the processes, you can think of it when all of these maneuvers began, Dragon was on the right-hand side of that screen, did all of the, the phase burns, the boost burn, um, those co-elliptic burns, and now we just moved into that approach initiation. We're hearing good calls about the trajectory of that burn. It's converging on waypoint zero. In that graphic, you saw waypoint zero was really right underneath the International Space Station. It's about 400 meters uh, right above what's called the R bar that goes kind of straight through uh, the International Space Station. That marker brings us into the uh, what's called approach ellipsoid. Again, it begins the joint operations, but there's another circle uh, that surrounds the International Space Station at about 180 to 200 meters, and that's called the keep out sphere. Uh, we just heard a confirmation of a good uh, approach initiation burn with a nominal burn. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to Ground, nominal burn. Reminder to review impulsive retreat recovery cue cards if desired. SpaceX Dragon copies good burn and we have that review and work. All right, and that call was uh, communicated up to the crew. That propulsive retreat uh, just allows the crew to take control uh, if uh, the, they were to find anything off nominal from what we've seen so far. But we did hear from the uh, flight controllers here in Mission Control Hawthorne that the trajectory has converged onto waypoint zero. That's that marker I was just talking about right underneath the R bar. So we're looking pretty good. There is an out of plane burn or a mid course maneuver burn uh, just in case we were to steer off course from that convergence onto waypoint zero. Uh, but right now we're looking pretty good, Kate. Yeah, at this point in time, uh, Dragon is basically steering itself. Uh, of course, the crew 
inside have the ability to take over if necessary, but right now Dragon is actually using all of the sensors that it has on board to steer itself and use that uh, onboard flight computer to do the calculations and um, get to the International Space Station on autopilot, basically. Uh, so it's a pretty advanced machine uh, in terms of its ability to get to and move away from the International Space Station. Um, but as we'll see over the next roughly hour to hour and a half, um, everything is going to be slow and steady um, and everything is carefully coordinated. Um, each phase, each maneuver, um, each waypoint that we move through is um, basically given the go ahead uh, from the teams here at uh, Mission Control and space, at SpaceX as well as at Johnson Space Center. Um, of course, the crew on board uh, the International Space Station who are monitoring Dragon's progress and of course the crew inside Dragon Endeavor itself. That's right. It's going to be a very methodical approach. Um, and um, we, uh, right now, after that waypoint zero mark, we're going to swing in front of the station and we'll be docking to the Zenith port. This is the port that's on the space facing side of the International Space Station. But again, we're just one of the control rooms here that are following along in the action. You heard that discussion about the big loop. There's a lot of players involved here. We're here at Mission Control Hawthorne, and you can see the flight controllers right next to us monitoring the Dragon's flight. Of course, the destination today is the International Space Station. Why don't we go over to the Johnson Space Center where we have uh, Rob Navius standing by and following along along in the action in the International Space Station Flight Control Room. How's it going, Rob? Gary, Kate, good evening, and it's great to be with you guys tonight here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, the Orbit 3 team of flight controllers on duty, led by Flight Director Pooja Jasrani, the spacecraft communicator who will be talking to the station crew throughout the course of the rest of the rendezvous, and the post-rendezvous activities is Capcom David Brenna. Everything has been going swimmingly. All of the uh, approval points uh, have been uh, crossed with no issues reported. All the systems on the International Space Station are in excellent shape, awaiting the arrival of the uh, Crew Dragon Endeavor at an expected docking time of approximately 11.45 p.m. Central Time, 12.45 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, 12.45 a.m. Eastern Time on Friday morning. Once uh, the docking occurs and the hooks are closed to form a hard mate between Endeavour and the uh, Nader, uh, the Zenith port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station, there will be leak checks on both sides of the docking interface, followed by the opening of the hatches and a subsequent welcoming ceremony as the Crew-6 uh, quartet arrives on board to begin their half year on the International Outpost. While all this has been going on, there has been other activity on board the station. Uh, Roscosmos cosmonaut Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin moved their Soyuz seed liners from the damaged Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft to the newly arrived Soyuz MS-23 vehicle. That occurred earlier today. NASA's Frank Rubio will move his custom-made Soyuz seed liner from the Crew-5 Crew Dragon, that's Endurance, where it's been temporarily parked, over to the new Soyuz vehicle that is scheduled for Monday morning. So with all that in mind, the action uh, split between here in Houston and you guys in Hawthorne, California, and we'll be back with you later throughout the course of the night. Gary, Kate. All right, thank you, Rob. Um, now, of course, we're uh, waiting, and uh, hopefully we'll be getting views of the Dragon from the International Space Station Fingers soon. Crossed. But really, this has been, I mean, it's been quite a long journey for the crew. We're coming up on uh, about 24 hours, um, and it started, like you said, Kate, uh, yesterday for us, but of course it was the same day. Launch day preparations started early for those crew members. Uh, about four hours prior to launch, uh, the crew completed their final medical checks before joining the SpaceX teams to get into the spacesuits. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon Ground for suit donning. SpaceX Dragon, we're good. Hey, Steve, we're just looking for status on suit donning for seats one and four. We're just finishing up our conference now, and we'll be done in uh, less than a minute. Copy all. Uh, do we have permission to bring cameras back on board? And you have permission to bring cameras back on board. Copy. And just as an update, ground team is still working through big loop configurations, but we are still go in this config through waypoint two. Dragon copies, thank you. 
All right, some more back and forth there with the crew on board Dragon um, and the SpaceX core. Uh, located here in Hawthorne, California at SpaceX Mission Control. Uh, sounded like CORE was just reaching out to confirm. Um, Cameras are back on board. Cameras. SpaceX Dragon copy cameras back on board and our comm checks internal are complete. Copy all. So it sounded like the core just wanted to check in to see if Sultan and Andre had completed uh, putting the, the process of putting their suit on or suit donning. Um, and of course they checked that prior to turning the cameras back on in board. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we should get some live views uh, coming from Dragon Endeavor uh, from inside the capsule. That's right. Um, now, this is uh, about, we're more than 24 hours from when they uh, had, were actually getting ready uh, to be at this point and get ready to dock with the International Space Station. Uh, this is a view from 24 hours ago uh, after suit up in the NASA and operations and checkout building. Uh, you can see the crew walking out, waving to some final farewells to their family and friends uh, who were waiting outside. After waving, they got in their Teslas and made the approximately 20 to 25 minute trip out to pad 39A. Uh, where they uh, were made their way up the uh, crew access uh, the crew access elevator. You can see them craning their neck to get one final look at the rocket, and then made their way down the crew. Zero one zero, suit donning, and audio config has been completed. See again to the side hatch there. Copy, suit donning complete. And of course, the suits that they're donning, uh, you could see in some of the views from yesterday, right before launch. And you heard that confirmation uh, now back with a live action uh, after approach initiation burn. The suits that you just saw in that clip from 24 hours ago, that's uh, the suits that they're wearing in the position that they uh, that we showed in that recap video. You saw the commander and pilot, uh, Steve Bowen and, and Woody Hoberg in the center seats flanked by the mission specialist that you were mentioning, Kate, uh, Andrei Fedyaev and uh, Sultan al Niadi. Uh, so they are all suited up. You heard those uh, initial, they did an internal uh, comm checks, which means they have the ability to talk to one another in the cabin of the Dragon. Uh, but we're hearing some of those Dragon to ground communications now, confirming that uh, they're getting ready to go for the next set of operations. Yeah, those comm checks are important uh, because as we step into the dynamic operations, the crew will be instructed to close the visors of their helmet uh, and that, well, I guess that will happen after they get back in their seats and, and strapped back in. Um, so prior to um, beginning the more dynamic phases of docking, um, the crew actually will need to step through not only contracts with each other like they just did, um, but contracts on the ground. And they'll also go through a suit leak check uh, where they will strap into the seat and the suit will be pressurized. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to Ground, you are go to begin suit leak check procedure. Right on cue. It's like I planned it. <laughs> SpaceX Dragon, go to perform suit leak check procedure. That's in work. So in this uh, process, they're actually filling the suits with nitrox. Uh, pressurizing the suits and making sure that they maintain pressure. They can check for any leaks along the way. Here's a graphic of the suit that they're wearing. 3D printed helmets and custom uh, fitting for each astronaut, which is of course into custom seats to allow um, for the uh, maximum absorption of loads as they make their way through some of the more dynamic phases of flight, including landing, which they'll do six months from now. Uh, but that is uh, currently underway, that pressurization, just make sure it maintains the pressure. It's an, act, it's an added layer of redundancy, right? Mm -hmm. The cabin of the Dragon itself is pressurized and meets all of the crew's needs in terms of cabin and, uh, and uh, a good mix of nitrogen and oxygen atmosphere, carbon dioxide scrubbing, but the suit does that as well. And in just in case of a cabin depress, that suit um, is uh, their last line of defense for uh, protecting the crew in a pressurized environment. And these suits are custom fitted to each astronaut. So while they are coming to SpaceX Hawthorne uh, to do training exercises, they are also getting uh, their measurements taken and performing comfort checks uh, for their suit during the manufacturing process. So um, those suits, uh, 
they do have to wear them for long stretches of time and we wanted to make sure that they were not only safe and functional uh, but they were comfortable as well um, so really customizing each shoot each suit for the astronauts um, is something that is done for every mission and it also ensures that um, they aren't unable to swap suits or mistake and flash down, um, the astronauts will actually put their suits back on to make sure that everything still fits because the human body does change while up on the International Space Station with that microgravity environment. Um, so I guess the Crew 5 crew, Gary, maybe you know if they've already performed it's their... SpaceX Dragon, we're ready to pressurize. It's just an indicator that the Crew 6 uh, astronauts are in their seats. Dragon, you are go to initiate suit leak check. Go to initiate suit leak check. Dragon copies. So that's Commander Steve Bowen giving the indication that they are going to step into that leak check for the suits. As Gary mentioned, that is a nitrox mixture that will be pushed through as the same stuff that's used in scuba tanks uh, for, for our scuba divers out there. Um, and it's also cooled to help keep the astronauts um, comfortable while they're sitting in their seats. We got some great views uh, during launch of that uh, these suit leak check. It's a, it's a very standard thing. They actually do suit leak checks. Uh, they they when they, during the initial setup they do it again uh, when they ingress the Dragon uh, through the side hatch right before launch, and then you see them doing it now before some of these very dynamic phases of flight. The docking is is considered a dyn dynamic phase. Um, we got some great views when we were watching launch, and you can actually see the the uh, suits themselves start to inflate, get a little puffy. Uh, we had Raja Chari. Uh, uh, as one of our uh, guest commentators over at the Cape, and he was uh, describing the experience, Roger Chari being an experienced commander aboard Dragon for uh, Crew 3. And he was able to describe, as we were seeing it, some of the components of the suit start to move uh, and, and expand during that uh, process. It's almost, we almost got a feel for what it was like to yeah. be inside the suit. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it was so awesome listening to all of his insight, having experienced it firsthand. So at this point in time, the uh, astronauts are in the leak check for their suits. This is to confirm that um, basically all the zippers are in place. Um, if the leak check comes back for one of the seats or, or one of the suits um, indicating that it's not holding pressure, um, they would have to go through and just make sure that all the zippers are in place uh, and make sure that there is no damage to the suit. Um, and it's, uh, as Gary mentioned, just a standard part of the procedure. Um, it usually takes a couple minutes to complete. As we said, we, we bring the suits up to um, a certain pressure and then we let it sit there and we basically measure the amount of decay or leakage um, that is spread out um, by the measurements. And um, hopefully we're gonna be hearing pretty soon that there is, there is no leakage or decay um, and that we'll have four good uh, suit leak checks. The timing of this is uh, very precise. The reason that they're doing this right now, after this major burn, of course, um, but it allows just enough margin for the crew to um, assess the leak checks, but then perform any uh, mitigation strategies just if necessary, if they need to redo a check, um, because we're getting into the dynamic phases of flight. But once they confirm that they have a good seat suit leak check, they are in those seats for the remainder of flight. Um, this is, of course, a, a very important milestone that we just passed, that approach initiation burn that gets us into joint operations. Once they're in there, they remain in the seats, strapped in throughout all phases of flight. Now, throughout the 24-hour journey, up to this point, they've been able to float about the cabin. Uh, they even had a sleep period and got to sleep in whatever position that they wanted to either in the seats or uh, they have the ability to strap themselves to uh, one of the walls and sleeping bags, uh, whatever makes them comfortable. But at this point, uh, during the uh, very dynamic phase of flight... Dragon leak check complete. All suits are nominal. That's a great call. Dragon, copy and concur. All right, good news there. Sounds like all four of those suits had good leak checks. So at this point in time, Dragon is going to continue its coast um, as it uh, heads, to heads towards the, um, the opportunity for mid-course correction and ultimately waypoint zero. 
Um, but as of right now, hopefully we'll be able to get some live views inside the cabin soon. But the crew six astronauts are in their seats, they're buckled in, and we've just completed four successful suit leap checks. Um, so the visors are down, and as Gary said, this is basically how they will remain until uh, docking is complete, as it is a dynamic portion um, of the overall flight. You know, we keep talking about the Crew-6 astronauts, but why don't we get to know them? We'll start with the uh, commander of Crew-6, uh, Steve Bowen. Steve Bowen was born in Cohasset, Massachusetts. He holds a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the U.S. Naval Academy and a master's in ocean engineering from the joint program in applied ocean science and engineering at MIT and Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. In July 2000, Bowen became the first submarine officer selected as an astronaut by NASA. This will be Bowen's fourth trip into space as a veteran of three space shuttle missions, STS-126 in 2008, STS-132 in 2010, and STS-133 in 2011. Bowen has logged more than 40 days in space, including 47 hours, 18 minutes during seven spacewalks. As the mission's commander, he'll be responsible for all phases of flight aboard Dragon from launch to reentry. As for our pilot, Woody Hoberg is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He earned a bachelor's degree in aeronautics and astronautics from MIT and a doctorate in electrical engineering and computer science from the University of California, Berkeley. He is also a commercial pilot with instrument, single engine, and multi-engine ratings. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to Ground for Big Loop Config. SpaceX Dragon with you. Hey Woody, we think we've resolved most of the issues with the Big Loop, um, so expect a call on the Big Loop for comm checks. Just as we were talking about Woody Hoberg, that was him just now uh, responding back to... Dragon, SpaceX, on the big loop. Comm check. SpaceX, Dragon, have you loud and clear on the big loop? Hey, Steve. 144K bidirectional link established. Change PTT destination to ISS and then initiate comm checks with SpaceX, Houston, and station. How copy? As a reminder, we'll be hearing from several different locations to configure this big loop. You'll hear from in this view right here from the flight controllers here, Mission Control at SpaceX. We'll hear from the Capcom over in the International Space Station. And of course, from aboard Crew Dragon Endeavor, as well as the International Space Station. Dragon Station on the big loop. The last half of your transmission was cut off. Station Dragon, this is just uh, check. Okay, got you loud and clear now. Excited to get you guys on board, and not just because we get to go home after that. And Station, we agree we'll be happy to send you home, and I'm looking forward to seeing you this afternoon, this morning, this evening, whatever it happens to be. Sounds great, Steve. Houston, Dragon, on the big loop, comm check. Dragon, this is Houston on the big loop. I hear you five by five. How do you mean? Morning, Steve. And Houston, uh, Dragon, we have you loud and clear as well. Awesome. Sure it's good to hear y'all's voices today. Station, Houston, how do you hear me? On the big loop. Houston Station has you loud and clear, David. Great news, Josh. Look forward to working with you all today. Let's do this thing. Station concurs. That there is... Uh, that right there is a live view from Dragon Capsule looking at the International Space Station coming from the thermal uh, imagers on board Dragon. And we're of course seeing an over-the-shoulder camera view right now inside Dragon Endeavor. This is a live view 
We just configured that big loop with four different locations from right here in the cabin of Crew Dragon Endeavor. You heard uh, Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen uh, talking aboard the International Space Station with NASA astronaut Josh Cassida. He'll be working the uh, rendezvous operations for uh, this evening, Pacific time. You could hear, hear uh, Woody Hoberg get a little confused um, as uh, they're continuing to shift their schedules. They had a shift to a launch schedule um, in terms of sleep, and then they'll have to shift back to uh, Greenwich Mean Time to for life aboard the International Space Station. We also checked in with the uh, Capcom over in Mission Control in Houston. Uh, that's David Brenna, and then uh, the core here in uh, Mission Control in Hawthorne. Yeah. So that's uh, four different locations. Everything looks good for the big loop configuration uh, this evening. Now, that view there, um, as we mentioned, over the shoulder, um, looking between Commander Steve Bowen, who would be on the left-hand side, and Pilot Woody Hoberg, who would be on the right-hand side. Um, the displays that they have in front of them are uh, basically how they continue to monitor progress of the mission throughout flight um, as we are stepping into, or as the crew has been uh, performing the various burns and, and, and soon um, the, will be passing through the waypoints. They'll actually be able to uh, follow along which um, exactly what Dragon is doing. As I mentioned before, it flies itself. Um, it is um, completely autonomous in terms of its approach and departure from the International Space Station, but those crew displays uh, contain all the information that they need in order um, to, ma to uh, maintain awareness of what's going on, um, the various readouts, including uh, the acceleration, the Gs that they experience, which thrusters um, are firing and when. Um, of course, their, um, their positioning, um, the status of the nose cone, uh, whether it's open or it's closed. Of course, it's open right now. Um, but uh, a, a number of, of useful information that they're able to um, keep, keep uh, basically tabs on of, of the information that they, uh, that they need to be aware of. We hope to be getting some more views from inside Dragon. Uh, the way that the communication and visual system works inside Dragon is we get those views when Dragon's above the ground stations. That allows for high bandwidth uh, data rates to be f actually flow video down to us. So we'll see those periodically, and then when we lose them, we'll, of course, show uh, the flight control teams here in Hawthorne. Um, in that center screen, though, it was interesting. You could see the trajectory that the crew was taking, and, and uh, if you saw, it kind of looked like an upside-down V. They're actually, right now, sort of behind the International Space Station, catching up from behind. And it was that V-shape because uh, at all points, you can see it now that we're getting live video, uh, you can see that the crew, its that's not the trajectory it's going to take, but uh, the flight computers are actually determining different breakout trajectories just in case they needed to actually execute a breakout maneuver. Uh, it would bring the Dragon into a 24-hour tr safe trajectory. But as long as everything continues to be go, uh, that display will continue to change and will proceed through the next steps to actually go get closer and closer to the space station and eventually for a docking. Again, um, we mentioned at the top of this broadcast that we're going to be docking to the zenith port uh, of the International Space Station that's actually at the top. So once we get right underneath the space station, we execute a burn to swing right out in front. We're hopefully get some really good views of uh, both the Dragon and uh, from the International Space Station and uh, the um, space station from the Dragon as we witness that but then it'll go up top we are i also uh, just heard a call about a mid-course maneuver uh, so they are tracking that that just helps us to continue on our uh, trajectory towards that waypoint zero uh, which we are uh, which we are heading towards right now and that waypoint zero again is about 400 meters directly below the international space station so for those of you that have just recently tuned in uh, the crew has uh, basically been on a journey for the last 24 hours <laughs> on their way to the International Space Station. Um, they have completed the approach initiation, uh, so they're essentially coasting towards the International Space Station right now, um, but they have an, uh, a couple of waypoints, uh, or basically navigational stop and go points, where as they approach each waypoint, uh, the integrated teams um, at JSC here at SpaceX um, and also on board the International Space, International Space Station will all give um, basically a thumbs up to continue to proceed. Um, everything that we're going to be doing over the next hour or so in terms of these um, maneuvers and um, the, the approach to the International, International Space Station um, is slow and steady. Um, 
even though they are in space going technically 17,500 some miles an hour, it's all relative to the International Space Station. So their acceleration toward um, the ISS is um, is really slow. And uh, as I mentioned before, Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, nominal mid-course maneuver complete. Trajectory converged on waypoint zero. Copies. All right, you just heard that call. Now, again, that mid-course maneuver is a correctional burn that takes place in between uh, the approach initiation and the arrival of Waypoint Zero. You just heard that confirmation. We executed the mid-course maneuver, and that's done about the halfway point from the starting point of uh, the approach initiation to that Waypoint Zero that we've been mentioning. It's a small burn. It just fine tunes our approach to ensure we're targeting that precise point 400 meters directly below the station. And you see that, that now with that mid-course maneuver, they've updated their displays in the center. And you can see uh, what we've been describing, Kate. It goes right underneath the station and it swings right out in front. And it's going to go above the International Space Station, above what's called the V-bar. Um, that's the docking axis if you were to uh, approach the docking port at the very front of station. But we're going to be swinging up um, in, front of this, uh, in front and above the station to reach that zenith port. All of this happened in the past 24 hours. You see a phase burn, uh, a boost burn, a series of five major burns to get us to this point, and we are well on our way. We're doing pretty good so far. Yeah. As we mentioned before, the crew in their seats, in their suits, they performed nominal leak checks, um, and at this point in time, uh, they are going to be approaching um, waypoint zero, about 400 meters below the station. Um, it will be at what is known as waypoint zero, and it will be the first checkpoint during our approach. Uh, the vehicle can hold here at 400 meters, but if all of its systems check out, then it can continue uh, to approach waypoint one. And waypoint one is uh, just about 220 meters right in front of that uh, docking port. So really, the waypoint zero and waypoint one are on opposite ends of the space station. Waypoint zero being, yeah, here's a really good graphic. Waypoint zero being sort of right below the International Space Station. You don't really reach waypoint one until you're 220 meters right above. So at this point in time, we are standing by for that waypoint zero. We heard that the mid-course maneuver, uh, just that opportunity for the computers on board Dragon to um, make any final course corrections as it approaches that waypoint zero. Um, as Gary said, that's 400 meters away from the International Space Station. More live views there of the inside of Dragon Endeavor. Commander Steve Bowen on the left-hand side of your screen and pilot Woody Hoberg on the right. We hope to also be saying we're getting great views from inside Dragon Endeavor as we uh, continue to have coverage from some of the ground stations that provide some of these live views. Uh, but we also have many cameras on the outside of the International Space Station, high-definition cameras, uh, and hopefully we'll be getting a tally-ho uh, from some of those cameras on board, and we'll be able to show that uh, here as part of this broadcast. Uh, and w there's some great views from what I recall from past approaches, um, especially when we get that waypoint zero mark, and then all the way up to the docking axis, we get fantastic views. Here's one, it's still pretty far away. You can sort of see the blinking uh, navigation lights of the Dragon. It's still, um, it's still quite a distance away, so um, we can't really make out a lot of the features. We're also in an orbital nighttime. Uh, the International Space Station is 259 statute miles over the North Atlantic Ocean in an orbital nighttime, so um, you can see the views are a little bit obscured. We don't have the illumination. Uh, this is a fun view. Yeah. This is very inception of Dragon looking at the space station on the left <laughs> using thermal camera. So um, and that's um, <laughs> then on the right hand side, uh, the little flashing dot is Dragon being seen by the International Space Station. So this actually reminds me of the, the Spider-Man meme of the Spider-Mans pointing at each other. <laughs> The 
the uh, at, when we get closer to the International Space Station, we meeting the Crew Six astronauts, uh, they're able to communicate with the International Space Station and use a lot of the resources that are on board, including um, GPS. Uh, when it gets to a certain position, it uses relative GPS to understand uh, where the Dragon is uh, relative to the International Space Station, and that's much finer of a of a approximation of location versus the trip up. Uh, to this point during the rendezvous phase. Uh, so when we use the assets aboard the International Space Station, when we use those TDRS tracking and data relay satellites, uh, we're able to get a much better approximation. And then, of course, uh, when we get to uh, closer to docking and we can use uh, the different cameras on board Dragon and really understand exactly where we are, and that helps us to push in for those final moments uh, of approach in for a docking uh, using some of the visual assets and uh, optical cameras that are aboard uh, the Dragon looking at the International Space Station as it makes its way in. You can see that was one of the thermal cameras that we could see right now. Uh, you can see the uh, some of the features of the International Space Station. As we get closer, you'll really get to pick out a lot of those really distinct features of the International Space Station, the solar arrays, a lot of the pressurized environment, the trusses, uh, and that's all coming up very soon. Yeah, those um, sensors, there's uh, a number of them and there are redundanc redundancies as well. Um, those are all housed inside, um, basically underneath the nose cone. So the nose cone protects not only um, the forward hatch, which is the hatch that is used to connect to the International Space Station, um, but it also protects all of those sensors that are critical um, to navigating to and from the International Space Station. So a great uh, graphic there uh, with some visuals of the Dragon capsule. The top half being the pressurized section, uh, standing 16 feet tall. Um, that is where the crew is. That's where those live cabin views come from. Um, the nose cone is... Dragon SpaceX on the big loop for approach setup. Ground has pulled go for approach zero and will enable the maneuver shortly. Expect a tar start time is per your displays. Reminder that Dragon will continue approach through waypoint one toward waypoint two. It's X Dragon copies. Thank you. So that approach zero is the actual burn that occurs at waypoint zero. Uh, so when they actually reach that waypoint, that's the 400 meter marker. The approach zero is is the actual firing of the Draco thrusters that swings us out in front. You also heard that call. We're going to push forward from waypoint one to waypoint two. That means we're not pausing. We're, we're going. <laughs> Everything's looking good. Everything's <laughs> looking really good. That means that once we hit the waypoint zero, there's not going to be a pause at waypoint zero followed by the approach zero burn. It means we're going to pass smoothly through that waypoint zero. Station Houston on the big loop. Expect start monitoring Dragon in approximately 45 minutes. Okay, station copy. That's confirmation from Josh Cassida aboard the International Space Station. His job is to monitor the approach. Uh, he has a, a software on board the International Space Station called the RPOP, Rendezvous uh, and Proximity Operations Panel. It allows him to get data directly from the Dragon. Uh, they're communicating with each other, the Dragon and the International Space Station, through a common protocol and common uh, system called C2V2, Common Communications for Visiting Vehicles. It's a standardized protocol that a lot of uh, different vehicles use so that we don't have to continue to renegotiate protocols for each of the different vehicles. It's standardized. Uh, so that communicates with the RPOP and allows him to see telemetry. Also, for Josh Cassida, if anything were to look uh, off nominal from Josh Cassida's point of view, um, aboard the International Space Station, he actually has the ability to issue an abort. Uh, now, of course, the crew aboard uh, Dragon uh, also has that ability, but these are redundancies and safeguards that allow for the safe uh, approach and docking of a crewed vehicle to the International Space Station. Absolutely. Yeah, those um, displays that we saw, it's those physical buttons um, 
that have white writing on them. So it almost looks like a white light, but it's actually a, a black button with um, an illuminated white writing on it that allows the crew to basically enable those breakout scenarios um, if necessary. Um, depending on what phase they are in, the breakout is uh, is different. As Gary mentioned, we actually were able to see um, how the onboard flight computers were basically calculating uh, projected breakout scenarios. Um, and there you can see it on your screen. Right. Um, that center display being the, the primary one. Um, you can also see the screens on the, the left and the right um, are now also um, being used uh, in order to show additional information. As we said before, um, they're able to monitor uh, the activity of the various thrusters um, as well as uh, the velocity. Just as we predicted, Gary, those iconic features of the space station coming into clearer view. Yeah, the long kind of horizontal feature is the truss of the International Space Station. We're right underneath, uh, and one of the procedures that the International Space Station takes is uh, when the Dragon is approaching, it starts to, it locks the solar arrays. Um, so they, they're not actively moving. They're in a position, it's, it's for safety reasons, it's for loads reasons. Um, so they're, they're sort of vertical. You can't really make them out from this position, but uh, you were able to see there for for a moment, some of the radiators that uh, go out, that uh, project out the back of the truss towards the aft position, and those expel heat uh, from the International Space Station. Now back in Mission Control Hawthorne, of course, this is a very, we call it joint operations for a reason. It takes uh, several teams all working together uh, to actually execute uh, this very delicate operation. Here at Mission Control Hawthorne, the teams here are monitoring the systems aboard the Dragon. If we go over to Houston, Texas, you can see this is the International Space Station Flight Control Room. The teams here are, of course, monitoring Dragon, talking with the teams here in Hawthorne, but their responsibility is the International Space Station. The destination uh, for Crew 6, uh, Crew Dragon Endeavor, and our four astronauts aboard today, once they dock and enter into the International Space Station, they're no longer designated as Commander, Pilot, mission specialist. That's their role when they're inside this crew vehicle. They have distinctive responsibilities with those titles. But once they enter into the International Space Station, their title for the next six months will be flight engineer. Uh, their responsibilities will be to conduct science, maintenance, uh, they'll be doing conducting a few spacewalks, uh, all to um, all to take part in the full utilization of science that is aboard the International Space Station. Once again, that is a view of the International Space, Space Station coming from Dragon Endeavor uh, using its thermal cameras to basically keep an eye um, on the space station. Um, it will, um, we will be able to see some additional sensors, the views from those sensors, um, as we get closer to the space station, um, as we uh, get closer and closer to the Zenith port. As we can see, the crew remains pretty chill um, in their seats. Uh, we can see that those visors are up at the moment. Um, of course, for the suit leak check, they had the visors down, um, but it looks like those visors are uh, now up so that the crew can converse with each other um, as we are moving through the, the waypoints. We're getting a good spoiler of the operations ahead, too, from that center screen. Mm -hmm. uh, when we do have those views, you can actually see the little indicator that is the dragon and how close it was to that waypoint. So we're really just moments away uh, from that approach zero burn. So you can see the astronauts have a, sort of had their arms up. When they're in the microgravity environment, it seems counterintuitive, right? Like to rest, we put our hands down on the table, but it's actually it's actually quite comfortable to just kind of let your arms fro at, float in front of you. I kind of think of it like when you're in the pool, mm -hmm. like it actually takes some energy to actually push your arms down. Uh, when, when they're in space, it's kind of like when you're underwater, it's just a lot uh, more comfortable to just keep your arms positioned right in front of you. Like Gary said, the crew can see where they are um, along the plan trajectory. Uh, fun fact, they have very similar information, um, or, or rather a very similar display um, during splashdown as well. So um, I all, before I knew that, I kind of thought that it was, you know, you're re-entering the atmosphere and you're not quite sure how close you are or how far along the process. 
Um, uh, there's our first up close view of Dragon um, from the International Space Station. No longer <laughs> just a blinking dot in the distance. <laughs> sort of see the navigation lights. The uh, There's red and green that indicates starboard and port. Uh, the position of the Dragon. And then there's that blinking docking light right at the center. Can't really miss it. That really illuminates the dragon, especially it was, it was very clear when it was much further away and we couldn't pick out some of these distinctive features. That docking light really did uh, a great job of having us to be able to locate the dragon from, from a, a much further distance. But we're really just at this point, we're so close to waypoint zero, I could effectively say we're about 400 meters away. There's a nice view kind of capturing um, a little bit more situational awareness um, of the International Space Station kind of painting the picture of just how close the crew is. Like we said, they are coming up to waypoint zero, which is about 400 meters away from the International Space Station, still outside of that keep out sphere. That keep out sphere is the 200 meters surrounding um, the space station. So they will remain outside of that keep out sphere for waypoint zero as well as waypoint one. That waypoint one will be 220 meters. Um, but I believe that we heard the call out indicating that uh, once they get through waypoint zero, um, they will not be stopping for waypoint one. They will continue uh, directly to waypoint two, uh, assuming everything continues to look good. We're also seeing a lot of that illumination that you're seeing is the sun. We're uh, coming into a, an orbital sunrise. So the space station right now is 261 uh, statute miles right over Germany. As a uh, sunrise is happening now over um, Eastern Europe. That's a really cool view because, oh, of course we lost it, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but that view is basically looking from the top down. Um, or, or a bird's eye view, if you will, of the Dragon capsule. Um, the little bump on the side of it is the nose cone because the nose cone is moved uh, out of the way um, so that we it exposes the forward hatch and all of the um, guidance and navigation control sensors. Um, that asymmetric white spot, basically, um, once it gets closer, you'll be able to see that nose cone in greater detail. Um, but another cool thing to look out for um, is you can actually see the windows of Crew Dragon as well. Um, whenever we were still, in, uh, when we did not have as much sunlight hitting Dragon, we were actually right. able to see the illumination coming from inside the cabin, not only from um, two of the side windows, but also from the forward hatch itself. There is a tiny window um, on, on that hatch as well. So. Um, Always kind of fun to, to, to look for as Dragon gets closer and closer to the station. Um, of course, we try to bring live views whenever we have them. Um, and so hopefully we'll be able to have more momentarily. Um, but as we mentioned before, oh, there we go. Looks like um, uh, Woody Hoberg, the pilot, just stretching his arms there. Um, we can see the crew continues to monitor along. Um, they use those crew displays basically to, to keep track of everything through the different phases of flight. Um, they are able to um, basically keep an eye on Dragon's velocity and altitude, uh, at least during the launch and entry phases. Um, whenever they are uh, on orbit, they can keep track of the attitude, the targets, the uh, relative velocity um, that they are achieving, the, the changes in velocity that occurred with each burn. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot of information. As I said before, Dragon, um, while it is completely autonomous, but it is important for the crew to uh, remain vigilant throughout the, the various phases um, in the unlikely event that they do need to uh, basically issue a, a breakout maneuver, but, uh, which they are able to do it at um, any point in time, take that manual control. Um, if, if necessary, they could actually steer to the ISS uh, themselves um, if for some reason oh, that's a great view there on the right showing the active um, usage of the thrusters on board Dragon with planet Earth rotating behind it so we can see just how hard those Draco thrusters work to keep Dragon um, on course to the International Space Station 
These are very short but strong impulses. Flight controllers are monitoring the burn and checking the convergence of the trajectory to make sure Dragon is going to continue that maneuver, swinging in front of the International Space Station, outside the keep-out sphere to meet with Waypoint 1. So we should be hearing a call-out soon that Waypoint 0 um, has concluded. Inside um, the International Space Station flight control room, there is a console position called Cronus. There you have uh, full command over the external cameras and are able to follow along. So you can thank uh, the person at that console now for those incredible views, adjusting the exposure, and we were able to see clear as day those Draco engines firing. Fantastic views from the external cameras of the station. Yeah, it's certainly not an easy job having to basically keep pace with the constant motion um, of... Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Approach zero has started and trajectory has converged on waypoint one. Expected arrival time is per your displays. And when you're ready to copy, I have some words for you on our Dragon Eyes. So a quick recap as we wait for the crew to respond. We did execute an approach zero burn. The trajectory has converged onto waypoint one. So we're following along. Everything looks good for this maneuver that we're witnessing right now. Dragon swinging in front of the International Space Station and head up towards the space facing side right in front of the docking port. Space Station and Dragon are approximately 261 statue miles over Turkey. It's morning over in Turkey. They'll continue in daylight for much of this maneuver. Once again, we're standing by to uh, get confirmation from the crew. It sounded like, um, oh, I just want to point out quickly, I mentioned before, in this view, you can actually pick out the two side windows of Dragon because they are illuminated from the inside um, there on the left-hand side. Uh, so kind of neat to, if, if it were me, I would have my face glued to the window <laughs> looking <laughs> out. <laughs> um, but it, we're standing by for, um, sounds like, SpaceX core wanted to uh, provide some information to the crew um, regarding uh, the Dragon Eyes, which are basically... Yeah, SpaceX Dragon, we're ready to copy for words on the Dragon Eye on the And Dragon, great news. We have good solution on both Dragon Eyes and we'll be continuing to station. Dragon, that is good news. Thank you. 
Yeah, so just a quick word, Dragon Eyes. Um, we love to be creative with our how with how we name hardware <laughs> here at SpaceX. Um, and the Dragon Eyes are exactly as the name suggests. They are what allow Dragon to see um, one of the several sensors on board Dragon that, that really um, steer it, part of that uh, guidance, navigation, and control systems. Um, but yeah, those Dragon Eyes uh, are, are basically uh, uh, clusters of two thermal imagers um, as well as two LIDAR range finders. Um, so those Dragon Eyes, there are two of them on board Dragon um, and those will be critical uh, for the, the docking uh, approach of Dragon Endeavour to the space station. So there, as I mentioned before, that nose cone, you can, you can see with better detail um, why that top-down view is asymmetrical um, with that nose cone having um, been opened and uh, that basically allows for that forward hatch and all of those docking sensors to be exposed. Um, of course, that hardware, while it may seem simple, actually has an incredibly important job to do, that nose cone, um, because like I said, the, that side hatch and those sensors are critical to be able to dock with the International Space Station, and it's that nose cone that protects those things um, during the ascent phase. Of course, that's the, the part of the vehicle that is piercing through the atmosphere, so it experiences um, pretty high levels of of um, aerodynamic loads. And so that nose cone, while it may seem simple, it's actually one of the most important parts of Dragon. These fantastic views, again, courtesy of the space station external cameras. We're on a southeastern track right now passing over Iran. I do hope Sultan al Niadi is paying attention to where he is. In a few moments, we're gonna be passing right over Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. It's amazing. You can see the features of uh, some of the beautiful coastal regions of Iran. And the Persian Gulf is very prominent, that blue area on the bottom left of your screen. Once again, Dragon has moved through uh, waypoint zero on its way to waypoint one. So it's basically um, somewhere between 400 meters and 220 meters. That waypoint zero is at 400 meters and waypoint one will be at 220 meters. And as we said before, they're gonna coast right through uh, waypoint zero and um, the, the navigation is basically set for waypoint two, which is 20 meters away from the International Space Station. So um, we will hear a call out about waypoint one as well as a call out indicating um, that they are clear to enter that keep out sphere, which is an imaginary sphere um, around the International Space Station uh, 200 meters out. And um, as the name implies, you gotta keep out <laughs> unless you have permission. <laughs> They indicate uh, different protocols and responsibilities for the joint teams. Right now we're inside the approach ellipsoid and with that comes certain protocols that have the International Space Station teams and um, the uh, uh, Dragon teams, uh, uh, SpaceX teams here in Hawthorne working together following a si similar set of what are, what are called flight rules. I do want to indicate at this very moment the International Space Station is 260 statute miles directly over Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. Arab Emirates. So you were mentioning the, the different zones, the approach ellipsoid, the keep out sphere. Right now, Dragon sitting at about 405 meters. It's a, a, a safe distance away from the keep out sphere. The keep out sphere has a, has a range depending on where you are of about 
180 to 220 meters. Yeah, you can see sort of that. It, it's almost like we're hugging the, the keep out sphere, but, but uh, we are a, a, a very safe distance away. When we converge onto waypoint one, we are going to see the dragon start to get uh, closer and closer until you get to that 220 meter point, until you uh, execute the burn maneuver approach one, and that uh, gets, sets you up to go to uh, waypoint two, right at the uh, 20 meter mark uh, in front of the docking port. We should be able to maintain good views of dragon as it swings out in front uh, to the docking axis on the velocity bar uh, that's sort of directly in front of the International Space Station. If we were docking to the forward port of the International Space Station, that's where we'd be much closer at this point. Uh, but we would that's where we would get to waypoint one and start moving in on the docking axis on the forward port. But of course, uh, crew five is uh, taking up space <laughs> on that uh, docking port. So we have to go to Zenith. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Expect reconfiguration of the C2V2 return link shortly. SpaceX Dragon copies. C2V2, again, common communication for visiting vehicles. There are similar um, hardware on both the Dragon and the International Space Station with a defined series of protocol that allow them to talk to each other. A lot of the telemetry that's on board Dragon is being fed over to the International Space Station. Inside monitoring Dragon's approach is NASA astronaut Josh Kasna, one of the Crew-5 astronauts. Expedition 68 flight engineer, his responsibility uh, for this morning, GMT time, waking up uh, really and getting right into the action after a crew wake aboard the International Space Station. This is one of their first uh, items on their to-do list for today is uh, welcoming their crew six colleagues aboard the International Space Station. We're now over the Arabian Sea, 260 statute miles. Over in the horizon is the Indian Ocean. That black dot right in the center of your screen, now larger, uh, is Dragon Capsule. What a beautiful view. Again, the console position in the International Space Station flight control room is Cronus, who has complete control over the cameras, adjusting zoom, position, as well as exposure. A game of constant adjustment, fighting against yeah, <laughs> the consistent movement. Right at the horizon there, yeah. yeah. As we mentioned before, Dragon has passed through waypoint zero at 400 meters, uh, and it's basically swinging up and out in front of the station. Um, and it will um, hit waypoint one at uh, about 220 meters. At that point, it will be on um, the docking axis, which basically means it will be directly in front of the docking port that it's heading to, which today is the Zenith port. Features a lot more prominent on board the International Space Station now as we're swinging more towards the forward end of the station. You can see those solar arrays now are, are much, much more defined, again, as part of uh, the procedures that are, part, that are defined for the flight rules of a spacecraft approaching the International Space Station. Those solar arrays are locked in that position. So we weren't able to see them right underneath, uh, but they're, they're much more clear from the cameras in front of the Dragon. You can see their Dragon's relative position um, to the International Space Station on that center screen. You can sort of make out the IROSAs as well. These are the International Space Station rollout solar arrays. It's part of a power augmentation plan aboard the station. You can see uh, the solar arrays come in pairs in each of the power channels 
And if you can see there's a gap, a solid black line in between uh, some of the legacy solar arrays, that means that they haven't been outfitted with an IROSA, but ones that are filled in with just a little bit of that illumination, they have IROSAs. On the center screen of the display, you can see uh, the outline of the keep out sphere. It's the circle that's closer to that middle point, which is uh, the International Space Station. But you can make out the different cone shapes that are coming out. Those are the approach corridors. Uh, there are two international docking adapters on the International Space Station now. One is on the very forward end, which we're looking really right at at this moment. But we're going to be going to the zenith port, which is right above. And so those are the approach corridors for each of those different uh, locations, docking locations on board the station. A little bit of overexposure on the external cameras, the Draco thruster firings become much more pronounced. You see, even though we're not executing a burn, one of the defined burns, which we could see a lot of thruster firings when we reach that approach zero point, because that was a significant maneuver, the Draco, fi the Draco thrusters continue to fire to keep uh, Dragon oriented throughout this flight. Yeah, actually on that view from um, inside the cabin, looking at the crew displays, uh, we are also able to see, um, so we're able to see what the crew can see, um, but on those displays, uh, I'll try to point it out the next time we have a view, but um, if you think of the display that was on the far left, oh, there it is. Um, so not the center display, but that display that's on the left, the top right hand corner of that left display, there's a circle with kind of like uh, a center circle and four quadrants. Uh, that actually shows, it, there it is, uh, we can see kind of like spots of that circle lighting up. That's yeah. actually indicating which thruster is providing um, that impulse in that exact moment. So if you watch that closely, you can see different parts of that circle lighting up and that is a visual representation of exactly which thruster um, um, is is firing and a reminder that this is an automatic flight so this is all happening autonomously uh, even though the commander and pilot have the ability to take control of the vehicle if necessary as long as things are nominal uh, dragon makes an autonomous journey all the way to docking Satan Dragon at about 452 meters from station at this time. You can see it's sort of elliptical. It's not a perfect circle that follows the exact line of the keep out sphere. It is more elliptical in shape, so we have increased a bit of distance right as we get to that uh, velocity bar. But once we cross the velocity bar, which is right sort of in the, in the middle of the space station at the, at the docking axis of uh, the forward port, we should start to uh, close in a little bit more and uh, decrease distance from the station. Here with this up close view, we should, yep, right there, should be able to see those uh, Draco thrusters firing. The ones that we see primarily are the service section thrusters. There's 12 of them. Um, basically around the side of Dragon and then the four forward uh, thrusters located around the forward hatch. But for the most part, we'll be seeing um, with pretty good views of that, of those, uh, basically those white puffs coming away from the capsule. Monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide take up the fuel an oxidizer that propels the Dragon using the Draco thrusters. 
Yeah, propellant that is um, very different from the propellant used on board Falcon 9. Uh, Dragon is actually fueled up with uh, that MMH and NTO uh, a couple weeks prior to launch in a facility that uh, we call Area 59 or Dragonland um, down at um, Cape Canaveral. So Dragon is pretty much ready for flight aside from cargo loading. Um, but yeah, different propellant than what we use on Falcon 9. And, and that's because um, the monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide, um, they basically, um, they combust when they come into contact with each other. Um, unlike uh, RP1 and liquid oxygen, you can mix them together and they won't combust. You need a spark. And that's what we use TTEB for. Um, but we don't, want or need a spark um, whenever we have that MMH and an NTO. Um, so it's a really important um, spaceflight propellant, basically, um, that has a lot of a lot of power. Thank you for correcting me. I think I said hydrogen to extra oxide, but it is nitrogen and NTO as the oxidizer for those for those engines. We're still in an orbital daytime, so the illumination you're seeing of the dragon is the sun. We're over the uh, Indian Ocean now, 263 statute miles. You can see we're now above the velocity bar. So we're at a higher altitude from the forward axis, the, dock, the velocity bar where uh, astronauts would dock if they were to dock to the forward port, but Crew 5, Dragon Endurance at the forward end, we'll be making our way to the Zenith port. And we are closing in. We're at 200, uh, 434 meters at this time. As we mentioned earlier, uh, excuse me, as we mentioned earlier, um, everything about this approach, every phase, every um, portion of it is really slow and controlled. Um, everything is conducted with uh, basically buy-ins from Johnson Space Center uh, in Houston, Texas, from SpaceX Mission Control here in Hawthorne, California. Of course, um, the International Space Station, the crew on board there already uh, is monitoring Dragon's progress, I'm sure, with great anticipation. They right. can't, can't wait to see their friends. <laughs> uh, but as they mentioned before, I think it was Josh mentioned, can't wait to see you because it means we get to go home soon. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but yeah, everything is slow and steady, super controlled, um, basically heavily choreographed among all, um, among all parties. So those four um, dots around the center of that uh, forward hatch, those are where those forward Draco thrusters are. So there's four of those on top and then 12 service section Draco thrusters. Forward bulkhead Dracos are not used at this close to the International Space Station, they're used for some of the longer, bigger burns, uh, like the closed burn and the closed uh, co-elliptic burn. Deorbit burn. Deorbit burn mm -hmm. is a huge one. Yeah, they do. A, it's, it's like 12 minutes or yes. depending on the mission, but very, very long, <laughs> it's a yeah. lot of work. <laughs> and really, and, and that, uh, that reorients the station to, uh, it's like a retrograde firing. So you fire it, and it, it just slows the dragon down significantly um, before uh, the trunk separates and you have to reorient the dragon to position the heat, seal, heat shields properly for re-entry. But that's, yeah, definitely one of the longest burns uh, that, that are used for the forward bulkhead Dracos. But again, they're not used at this point. We keep the forward end of dragon pointed towards the International Space Station for the navigation, the guidance, navigation, and control equipment that's at uh, the tip of the dragon uh, exposed by the open nose cone. Uh, so you've been noticing throughout this maneuver swinging from waypoint zero all the way up to um, waypoint one, we've, we've been pointing the same direction. And that's part of the reason that the Draco engines have been firing to keep that position throughout this maneuver 
uh, of pointing directly towards the International Space Station. That's why we've been getting fantastic views as well. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. C2V2 link reconfiguration complete. That again, common communication for visiting vehicles. It allows uh, the Dragon and the International Space Station to talk to, to, to talk to each other. Dragon now inside 400 meters from the International Space Station, 390 meters in closing. As it makes its way to waypoint one, we will close that distance to get to approximately 220 meters before executing the approach one maneuver uh, that brings us straight down the docking axis. We'll be pausing at waypoint two, which is approximately 20 meters away from the International Space Station prior to initiating that final approach. One thing I'd like to mention um, as we get this view of Dragon, really crisp and clean looking, um, not only from the image quality, but also from the capsule itself. Um, this is actually a reused capsule. So while we did replace the exterior uh, thermal protection system, that TPS, um, this capsule, this is actually the fourth time that it has been to space, been to the International Space Station. Um, I have such love in my heart for this particular capsule being the Demo 2 capsule that NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley flew in uh, to prove the capability of, of the Crew Dragon. Um, so it's just incredible to see it heading to the International Space Station once again. Um, that was almost exactly two years ago, I believe. Um, or no, I guess they launched in, I think it was May 2020. Uh, but the, um, the fact that it's been, been to the ISS now on its fourth trip in two years is pretty incredible. Um, also having been there carrying the Crew 2 crew as well as the Axiom 1 crew uh, to the International Space Station. So it's, it, it's pretty cool to see uh, Dragon Endeavor fly again. Once again, seeing those Draco thrusters um, activating, helping to keep position and that slow approach as we make our way toward Waypoint 1 which, as we mentioned before, we, we did hear uh, on the loops that uh, we will just pass right through waypoint one. We will not be stopping. Um, again, that's at 220 meters. Um, so we'll just cruise right on through into the keep out sphere and down on to waypoint two. Flight controllers are estimating about 10 minutes to get to that waypoint one arrival. You're mentioning Crew Dragon Endeavor. It's definitely a special capsule for me as well. First time I did a scent commentary for a launch was Crew 2. Uh, awesome. I also did the undocking and the fly around, if you remember Crew 2. Uh, did a fly around maneuver, really uh, doing exactly what it sounds like, flying around the International Space Station. I think we did that together. I, I, I recall that. I remember there was a flyover maneuver at some point. You, you mentioned uh, that, that forward window. We're getting very clear, clear views of it now. It's sort of where that blinking light is. Uh, Thomas Pesquet, mm -hmm. during Crew 2, uh, was able, for that fly-around maneuver, actually get out of the seat. Uh, once, once they undock, and they, they're fully suited up for the undock procedure, it's very dynamic. We were talking about that a little bit earlier to make sure you're fully suited up. But he was actually able to get out of the chair and... Uh, uh, take a digital camera and photograph the exterior of the station. We still use a lot of those images today. Beautiful views of the outside of the space station. So, yeah, very special capsule for me as well. I also worked very hard on the AX-1 mission from the NASA integration side. Seems like I, I just I seem to always be uh, connected to, to Crew Dragon, I guess to both of us, to Crew Dragon Endeavor. 
Yeah, I remember um, as I was still working in the production organization um, at the point in time when this capsule was being manufactured. Um, so I've actually been in it a few times, um, partially to support manufacturing, partially to support um, NASA visits. And um, it's, it's just wild to think that um, that is now uh, 250 miles above planet Earth going over 17,000 miles per hour um, and not for the first time. For like, the fourth that's, time, yeah. yeah that's yeah. just um, pretty wild. Named, of course, over uh, almost three years ago at this point. If we're talking May 2020 when Bob and Doug flew on uh, the Demo 2 mission. They were the ones that, that had the honor of naming the capsule. Both of them flew Shuttle Endeavor, so a very fitting name for the both of them. We still call them the space dads around here, even <laughs> though it was three years ago. <laughs> Once again, we're able to get clearer and clearer views of um, the portion of Dragon that was previously covered uh, by the nose cone. So we, we didn't get to see any of, uh, of that hardware during launch. Um, or, or during the pre-launch activities even. Um, so yeah, that is the forward hatch. That is the, the basically the door that the crew will use to get in and out of Dragon Capsule for the next six months. The side hatch, the hatch that they use to ingress Dragon uh, just over 24 hours ago, um, that will not be used at all until after they splash back down um, in the Atlantic Ocean or the Gulf of Mexico, um, TBD, <laughs> six months from now. All depending on weather. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that side hatch that was originally utilized to ingress, that will stay locked and sealed uh, until they come back home. So that forward hatch that we can see now um, is what will be docking to the ISS and will ultimately remain open um, for the next six months. That's right. And of course, we're monitoring from here in Mission Control in Hawthorne, California, next to the uh, SpaceX teams working aboard the Dragon. And we're getting closer and closer now inside 300 meters from the International Space Station, the destination of uh, Crew-6 and the four astronauts and cosmonaut aboard. Uh, we're working jointly with teams over in the International Space Station Flight Control Room over in Houston, Texas, who are carefully monitoring the procedures as closely as we are. Standing by in Mission Control is Rob Navius, and we'll toss it over to him for a quick update from Houston. Thank you, Gary, and uh, good evening once again from Mission Control in Houston. The flight control team here, led by Flight Director Pooja Jasrani, is uh, poised to accept the arrival of the Crew Dragon Endeavor. Everything has gone swimmingly so far here as flight controllers have checked out all of uh, the systems on board the International Space Station. Flight engineers Josh Cassida and Nicole Mann are monitoring the approach of uh, Crew Dragon Endeavor for its uh, final leg on the uh, road to a docking to the zenith port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. Once that docking occurs, it will take just a few minutes for hooks to close to form a hard mate between Endeavour and Harmony, at which point uh, there will be leak checks conducted over the course of about an hour and a half before hatches are open to allow the Crew-6 crew members to float on board and be greeted by the Expedition 68 crew. There'll be a brief welcoming ceremony in the wee hours Friday, followed by a safety briefing that will be led by Station Commander Sergei Prokopiev before uh, the crew members will begin uh, the beginning of several days worth of orientation in what amounts to about a five-day handover period before the crew five astronauts, Nicole Mann, Josh Cassida, Anna Kikina, and Koichi Wakata, begin preparations to come home to wrap up their six months in orbit. So we're all set for the docking of Endeavour to the International Space Station and the completion of this day-long journey for Steve Bowen and his crew. Back to you guys in Hawthorne. All right. Thank you, Rob. Great to hear everything's looking good from the International Space Station Flight Control. We're back here in Hawthorne monitoring the action. The Dragon now 250 meters from the International Space Station. We're heading towards Waypoint 1. This is directly in front of the docking port. 
uh, where crew uh, Dragon Endeavor, crew six astronaut and cosmonaut will be arriving here shortly. Following along on the action for about 24 hours since liftoff yesterday, it's about uh, from it's about a 24 hour journey to get to this point. Throughout that journey, the Dragon has been executing a series of burns to get incrementally closer to the International Space Station. The crew inside were able to have several meals and get a full eight hour sleep period before uh, they started their preparations to get ready for the dynamic operations getting suited up in those white suits that you see now that were getting views from inside the Dragon cabin from the over the shoulder camera. Steve Bowen on the left of your screen, Woody Holberg on the right. And this is the live view from Dragon Endeavor. That forward camera as we make our way, you can see very close. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Approach one and soft capture ring extension will begin shortly. Dragon will continue to approach to waypoint two. No thanks, Dragon copy. It's all good news. Thank you. That call out coming from SpaceX core David Huang. Just letting the crew know everything tracking well. Once again, we have great views of the crew displays. As I mentioned before, um, on the left hand side of the screen, in the top right hand corner of that left screen, uh, we see a circle and you might notice that parts of that circle light up momentarily. That is a visual indicator to illustrate which of the Draco thrusters are firing in that particular moment. Crew displays also um, have uh, areas where the um, ground teams can provide um, any alert activity or things, notes that the crew should be aware of. Um, they also have instrument overviews to provide situational awareness um, you know, of, of the various sensors uh, that are used throughout the phases of flight. They also, of course, have um, readouts for Dragon's velocity, uh, yeah, Dragon's altitude, altitude and target altitude, uh, as well as relative velocity. Overall, they are continuing to monitor Dragon's progress. Dragon Endeavor is flying itself at this point in time, although the crew has the ability to take over control should they need to. Um, but Dragon is uh, completely autonomous, so at this point in time, they are remaining um, active in monitoring the progress um, and, of course, letting the, the teams on the ground know of um, anything that they notice, but it's been quiet uh, so far, a pretty smooth ride. That is a view coming from Dragon of the International Space Station using um, one of the thermal imagers on board Dragon Endeavor. You can see those thruster firings now. We got confirmation of flight control teams here. Station Houston on the big loop. Monitor approach per step three of 1.102. Dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Let us know when your review is complete and you're ready for docking. And a reminder for Duke to begin monitoring for MLMTC restarts at this time. Copies, we've got that review in work. Copies, and we're in work on one decimal one zero two. Heard calls from several different locations. And Jock on the big loop, just to confirm with you, is Duke with you for those MLMTC retards? We copy, thanks. All positions on the big loop we heard as part of that. So we're now in approach one. You saw the Draco firings to get us. Now we're on that uh, docking axis with Zenith port. We're making our way closer to um, what's called waypoint two. This is a 20 meter marker right in front of uh, the docking port on the Zenith side. You heard call outs from core David Huang here in uh, Mission Control Houston, or Mission Control Hawthorne rather, Mission Control Houston, Capcom David Brenna talking with Josh Cassida aboard the International Space Station. You also heard that call sign Duke. It's referring to Nicole Mann, also monitoring Dragon's approach. And then, of course, Crew 6, Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg, commander and pilot, respectively. We also have Sultan Al Niati 
and Andrei Fedyaev on board as mission specialists. Now the pause at waypoint two is expected to be relatively brief. We are trying to, we are tracking the lighting window. You can still, you can see that Dragon and the space station are illuminated by the sun. So waypoint two is more of a pause rather than a hold. But as long as all the flight teams give a go, we'll proceed in for a docking and beat that lighting window. Right now, teams are estimating about 10 minutes until we make contact with that port. As we heard um, in the instructions to the crew to continue to monitor, um, the crew has a burn monitor tool um, available in their crew displays. Um, they are able to access that basically from the moment that the nose cone is opened all the way through deorbit burn. Um, it basically provides the information, you know, when we say monitor, monitor progress, um, you know, they're able to, to have that insight into um, the expected delta Vs, the, the magnitude of the burn, um, how long it will last, uh, and of course the, the countdown timers um, for um, Dragon's prep state of the burn as well as the, the burn execution itself. And the, the training that the crew goes through while they are uh, in the training modules here in Hawthorne, California actually includes uh, audio uh, from previous missions. So as the dragon is breathing, <laughs> is, is living uh, around them as it steers itself to the International Space Station, uh, they are able to um, you know, come into the situation well prepared, not startled, um, and it also allows them to basically know what nominal is for each portion of, um, of their flight. This is a great view we're seeing. It's the, on the right we have the station cameras looking at Dragon during its approach. Dragon is, uh, making its way to waypoint two, which is a 20 meter mark. We're at about uh, approximately 150 meters and closing. It is a slow and methodical approach. We're also seeing views from inside the cabin. In that center screen, you can see they're tracking uh, the trajectory. The flight computer is also calculating different breakout maneuvers should they need them. But again, we have teams all over monitoring we have the crew inside dragon the crew inside the international space station and flight control teams in hawthorne and houston everything's looking good for dragon's approach but prior to the crew um being able to pass through that waypoint two uh, we should hear a call out um instructing the crew to secure their visors basically bring those visors uh, locked or back down into the locked position um, to basically close the loop of their spacesuit because uh, at that point in time they will be at about 20 meters from the space station um, so that they basically uh, you can see the visors are now up so we should be hearing a call um, and a dragon spacex on the big loop soft capture ringing extension complete If we get views from the station, here we go, looking at Dragon, soft capture ring is that gray structure in the middle. You can sort of see some of the features. That is, uh, it's a soft capture ring because when it makes contact uh, with the station, uh, it actually has a little bit of give, allows for a softer um, docking, so it's not, it's not hard, although the approach is very slow. And then as part of the docking procedure, the soft capture ring uh, starts to retract and really pulls the Dragon in and allows hooks to drive to the international docking adapter, the hooks being on the Dragon side, uh, that allow for a hard mate uh, to the International Space Station. Space Station flight controllers, in the meantime, are working with the station's uh, attitude control configuration, altering between gyros and different thrusters on the uh, station side. There is a very uh, calculated set of procedures that have to do with a docking to minimize those loads on both spacecraft. 
pretty cool view here. Um, first time we've really been able, been able to see detail um, in the solar arrays. That is, those are the um, the panels there on the side of the dragon trunk. Uh, so that is what basically allows dragon to help power itself while it is uh, on orbit and uh, while it's making its way to uh, and from the International Space Station. Station, Houston on the big loop for procedure review. Houston Station is complete with our review of steps five and six, and we are ready for docking. Okay, Houston copies all, and at waypoint two, Dragon will briefly pause. That was NASA astronaut Josh Cassida inside the International Space Station. He's been monitoring the approach of Crew 6, confirming from the station side everything looks go from his perspective. Teams will continue to pull um, and giving goes across the board before actually proceeding. But that's great news. It's looking good from inside the station. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop. Houston and Hawthorne have pulled go for docking. Confirm visors down and that you are ready for approach 2. I'll copy. Dragon, our are down and we are ready for docking. Copy. SpaceX will enable approach shortly. As a reminder, once Dragon is inside the crew hands off point, retreat and breakout are not permitted. It's great news. Across the board, we have GOES to proceed past waypoint two in for docking. A little bit of refinement on the procedures that have been worked recently. At the 20 meter point, uh, traditionally we have held uh, for a pull before proceeding. This is more of a pause. At the 20 meter mark, there's gonna be a reconfiguration and then the Dragon will proceed in for a slow and incremental approach to make contact with the international docking adapter. But you heard across the board, Flight control teams in Hawthorne and in Houston, International Space Station teams and the crew aboard Dragon Endurance, all giving their go, all giving the green light to proceed with docking this evening. We're now inside 60 meters from the International Space Station. We are just under three minutes until we reach that hold point are on screen we can see those Draco thrusters continuing to fire inside 40 meters. I was just about to say that angle of um, being able to see Dragon there, you can see that soft capture ring uh, a little bit easier, as Gary was saying before, that um, basically will uh, uh, make contact with the International Space Station and pull Dragon in um, uh, for the, the hard capture portion, but that soft capture um, as the name indicates, just kind of um, makes it a little bit smoother of a process. We are entering into a short handover period from some of the tracking and data relay satellites that are providing views from the space station. Fingers crossed we get video during uh, docking. There is a chance that we will lose them. It's not a constraint to proceed with docking. Lighting is a bigger factor. But some of the incremental drops that you're seeing as part of our coverage is the uh,
tracking and data relay satellites that are providing the video that you're seeing right now. Confirmation that Dragon has arrived at waypoint two. As predicted, it's going to pause and reconfigure for its uh, approach two. The pause will be very, very brief, just a matter of seconds. We see your docking hooks not open. Warning, investigating. So you heard that as part of those checks that we need to give the go, even though the, they pulled go, we're going to continue to check all the systems on board Dragon before actually proceeding. Station Houston on the big loop, Dragon is going to hold here. Station copies. And there's that confirmation. So again, there was a reconfiguration that pause at waypoint two. This is built into the procedures, uh, doing an incremental series of checks. It looks like we were looking at the hooks to make sure that those hooks are the ones that are actually going to drive and create what's called a hard capture uh, of the Dragon to the International Space Station. It secures the Dragon firmly to the station to allow for the next series of very important steps of pressurization and equalization. There's a vestibule that separates the Dragon from the International Space Station. They're both uh, pressurized for, for humans to be able to successfully live aboard, but we need to bring that vestibule up, which is sitting at vacuum, uh, to allow us to open up the hatch and actually enter into the International Space Station. Very important series of steps. So we are gonna hold at waypoint two and investigate those hooks before proceeding. With the hold, we are regaining video from the tracking and data relay satellites. And Dragon SpaceX on the big loop for hook status. And SpaceX Dragon, go ahead on the big loop. Hey Steve, as you can see, Dragon is holding here at waypoint two. Um, this is due to that hook five micro switch issue that we had and ground is gonna be investigating commands and next steps, and we'll come back with more words. SpaceX Dragon copies will be standing by. So a little bit of back and forth there between Commander Steve Bowen um, and SpaceX Core uh, David Huang. Uh, just indicating that the teams here uh, on the ground are going to investigate um, and troubleshoot that the, the hook alarm that um, they noticed and that they will come back with more information uh, and instructions just momentarily. Um, it's a, I, I'd like to point out, because we keep hearing um, from uh, basically a, a single source uh, from SpaceX Mission Control. It's that core, um, obviously different personnel than it was 24 hours ago because <laughs> we, uh, we utilize shifts. Um, but that core is uh, basically the person that is responsible for communicating all things uh, to the crew from SpaceX Mission Control. Um, it's very similar. There's a view there. Um, that's David Huang now. Uh, and it's very similar to NASA's CAPCOM um, at JSC. That person's the, the point person to basically make decisions on distilling all the technical information that they are receiving from um, you know, the launch teams if it is launch day um, or now the, the, the docking teams as we are getting ready to dock and really distill the critical information, relay it up to the crew um, and get their feedback if it, if it is one of those scenarios. So once again, Dragon just uh, holding at waypoint two, about 20 meters away from the International Space Station. They're well within the keep out sphere. Um, as we said before, that it's an imaginary sphere around the space station measuring um, about 200 meters all around. And uh, yeah, so we are only 20 meters away from the space station, partially why we have a great view of Dragon um, as it is now holding there. Uh, while the teams investigate. 
In the meantime, you can see the views uh, of the dragon. They're going to start to get incrementally darker. We're entering into an orbital nighttime over the South Pacific Ocean now. Dragon and International Space Station, 264 statute miles over the South Pacific. We mentioned lighting was one of the things that we are watching. The Dragon does have the ability to dock during night during the night, uh, so it doesn't have to completely wait for the sun to rise. It's really just the angle of the sun that's really the most important um, to not interfere with some of the sensors, the guidance and navigation control equipment. But uh, it, it, it does have the ability to dock during the nighttime, so it gives the teams plenty of time to assess. They don't have to rush for any reason. Uh, so we're just going to stand by and uh, follow along with uh, some of the troubleshooting steps to make sure that we are going to proceed past waypoint two in for a docking. Hook number five uh, during ascent was the one, uh, if you recall, that was uh, the, the hook that was identified as part of the delay in the nose cone opening. Um, it is a software that, uh, that they're looking at right now. Uh, so it's just a reconfiguration. They were able to uh, open up that nose cone, of course, and a very important milestone because it reveals those forward bulkhead Dracos that got us to where we are right now. Uh, so the teams will just continue to assess, make sure we're in a good config before giving the go to proceed. Live view there of SpaceX Mission Control here in Hawthorne, uh, just right behind Gary and myself. Um, once again, we are holding at waypoint two, about 20 meters away from the International Space Station. Uh, this will be the final hold prior to docking once um, that go is given. But at this point in time, as Gary said, uh, the teams on the ground are doing a little investigation, some troubleshooting for that uh, hook number five. Um, as we mentioned before, it's those, the, the hooks are what basically uh, dock the capsule to the station um, and there was um, uh, an issue noted on it during the nose cone open yesterday um, so the teams are troubleshooting it and uh, working toward uh, next steps to relay to the crew so we'll stand by for that should we proceed with a contact and capture you're going to hear a series of call outs as we uh, make our way towards the international docking adapter you heard this as part of the relay to the crew before we even got to waypoint two. One of the commands was crew hands off point. Uh, you're going to hear that when the crew is uh, just meters away from the uh, international docking adapter. They're going to call out chop. Uh, that just means that the crew uh, keep your hands off of the abort uh, <laughs> button because uh, the dragon will do its job automatically. Um, and that's built into the procedure, so you'll hear that call out chop should they proceed uh, with contact today. Teams here in Mission Control in Hawthorne are the ones looking at the Dragon. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop for vehicle status. Dragon, go ahead. Ground is still working on investigating a path forward. The docking system is configured as expected, but believe we will require a software override to continue with docking. Vehicle is healthy, no crew actions at this time. Over two hours of hold time margin at waypoint two. Hop copy. SpaceX Dragon copies all, we'll be waiting. All right, so a quick recap. Station Houston on the big loop. Go ahead, Houston. Hey, Josh, we expect you guys to be in block Delta, step three or four of your approach and retreat monitoring at this time. And station copies. A reminder, this is joint operations. And Josh, on the big loop with you, just to clarify, three delta or four, but not the sub four within delta. Okay, we copy, thank you, David. Yep, we're, uh, we're staring at step four, thank you.
So on the right, uh, what you're hearing is the voice of David Brenna, he's the Capcom, and the International Space Station flight control room on the right. On the left, the core, David Huang, talking with the crew aboard Dragon Endeavor. Everybody working together uh, to monitor uh, the approach. You heard the calls on the right, on the station side, Josh Kasva at what's called the Rendezvous Proximity Operations Panel. His job is to monitor the approach of Dragon Endeavor. In the meantime, the crew aboard Dragon is standing by for the flight controllers to uh, reconfigure the software as they relayed up to the crew uh, to make sure that those hooks are in a good configuration. Those hooks very important for securing Dragon to the International Space Station. You also heard the call that they have a two-hour margin at waypoint two. Don't expect to hang here for, for two <laughs> hours, but it just indicates they're measuring the, the prop levels that are aboard the Draco engines. And it's not like they're going to run out of fuel at two hours. It just uh, builds in the time that they have two hours to uh, work the issue. And then if they do need to uh, uh, abort the, uh, the docking today, they could make their way with plenty of prop to a 24-hour safe trajectory and reattempt. Uh, but that's all built into the procedures. So we have a plenty of margin today for the teams to work this. Yeah, that's exactly right. And yeah, as we heard from SpaceX core David Huang, um, it's likely that they will have to force a software reboot, but um, the vehicle remains healthy and no crew action necessary at this time. Um, so the crew inside uh, Dragon Endeavor is basically just standing by waiting for further actions to come once um, the troubleshooting has completed by the teams here on the ground. Reminder of the journey of where we've been uh, up to this point. We made our way from the underneath the International Space Station out in front and we're docking to the Zenith port today. This is the space facing side. So you can see if you follow that line, we're at waypoint two holding 20 meters right in front of uh, the Zenith docking port. So we're inside the keep out sphere. The 20 meter hold point again is, is perfectly fine to hold at this point. We reviewed the two hour hold margin that's built into the procedures to allow us to work the software issue before proceeding for docking. The views will vary throughout our coverage as we continue to monitor this hold at 20 meters. The tracking and data relay satellites from a board station providing views of Dragon holding. We'll be going through several different passes, so uh, we'll be gaining those, regaining those views shortly. We'll be monitoring lighting conditions. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon ground for status. Dragon's with you, go ahead. I just wanted to give you an update that we have a set of software commands that we are currently testing. We expect feedback soon, but also want to offer that if you prefer to open your visors, you are allowed to. Okay, thanks. Copy, I've got a software fix at work in testing now, and we're going to open visors. Good feedback. All right, for those uh, just tuning into our coverage, Crew 6 and Dragon Endeavor are holding about 20 meters right in front of the docking port. Uh, as they made their way in um, at the waypoint two, there was a 30 second pause built into the procedure. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop for status. What is hold for this call?
Once again, for those that have recently joined, Crew 6 is holding 20, uh, 20 meters away from the International Space Station at Waypoint 2. Uh, we are standing by for a call from the crew. Um, as we indicated earlier, the teams here on the ground are troubleshooting um, an issue with hook number five, uh, which is part of the set of hooks utilized to uh, make hard capture with the International Space Station for docking. Um, it sounds like the crew was, um, uh, excuse me, it sounds like a manual software override was um, looking like the path forward um, and uh, no, no uh, risk to vehicle health. Sounded like we were going to get something there. Um, and um, everything, um, plenty of margin, two hours of margin um, uh, in, is available if necessary, um, although not expected to utilize. Um, so at this point in time, we're just standing by waiting for uh, some comms between core, um, SpaceX core crew operations and resources engineer, uh, and uh, just to communicate status back to the crew six crew. And a reminder that uh, the crew are in a good position. Holding at waypoint two is built into the procedures. Uh, in fact, it is it is relaxed. They're able to open up their visors. They will close them again uh, when the uh, ground teams give them uh, the go to proceed past waypoint two for docking. Uh, but in the meantime, they've pulled up their visors. They're relaxing. Um, but that uh, once they close their visors, that gives them an extra layer of protection. Uh, of pressurization just in, in the unlikely event of a cabin depress so that helm that uh, visor close will be an important uh, will be an important step before they actually proceed but right now they're just uh, again as Kate mentioned there's plenty of margin here uh, to allow the teams to continue to work this as we mentioned before they are holding at 20 meters which I personally am not great at um, feeling out or, or really being able to tell what distance is. So I actually looked it up. It's about the distance between the pitcher's mound and home plate. So that's how roughly how close they are to uh, the International Space Station. So um, they're in good position. There's no rush. Um, like we said, we have two hours of margin in order to allow the teams on the ground to complete the troubleshooting uh, for that hook. But um, we are standing by waiting for um, further instruction to the crew. Uh, we did hear that they were go for lifting their visors. Um, they were asked to put their visors back down um, right before waypoint one, I believe it was. Uh, and now that they are just holding at that 20 meter position, they're at waypoint two. Um, as the, the teams are, are working this issue, uh, they were able to uh, relax a little bit, continue to monitor the status on their um, crew displays, uh, and, and lift their visors up. And what, <clears throat> now, once they get aboard the International Space Station, Crew 5 has done a lot of preparation work to welcome them. In fact, once uh, we'll continue our coverage uh, after um, the Dragon docks to the space station and uh, follow, we'll toss it over to Johnson Space Center to continue our coverage through uh, the pressurization of the vestibule hatch opening. And then we'll do a welcome ceremony with 11 crew members on board. Uh, but Crew 5 has done a lot of work this past week to, to make sure that the Crew 6, once they enter the station, can get pretty comfortable. There is going to be some time of shifting uh, the schedules. Uh, so, so that will kind of make its way over the next couple of days. Uh, for instance, the International Space Station crew uh, were basically woke up and started their rendezvous uh, monitoring procedures. So they have a full day of activity ahead of them. Uh, but after that welcome ceremony, the Crew 6 astronauts have had a long day so far really preparing for docking uh, it's it's it is a long day of monitoring procedures a lot of focus uh, so right after the welcome ceremony they'll have a safety briefing and then they'll be able to go to bed um, crew five have actually so they've been staying in the crew quarters in node two aboard the international space station they've cleared out their sections and so um uh, for uh, Steve Bowen, Woody Hoberg, and for Sultan Al Niadi, they'll have their crew quarters already made up for them in Node 2, so they'll be able to go right oh, nice. into them. <laughs> and then uh, Andrei Fidyaev will head over to the Russian segment, where I'm sure uh, his cosmonaut colleagues have uh, prepared for to make sure he will get plenty of rest as well. So all of that uh, coming up soon as the teams continue to troubleshoot this issue at uh, Waypoint 2. Mm -hmm. 
as we've mentioned before, um, once you get on station, it is go, go, go. We've heard <laughs> from pretty much every uh, astronaut that has been on one of our um, launch or um, broadcasts. Uh, they've all said that once you get up there, it is really busy. Um, your days are full with conducting science, um, working out to make sure that you maintain um, you know, muscle mass and, and bone density um, as much as possible, and um, obviously sleeping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and eating. Um, and one of the things that I really enjoy watching whenever there's a new crew coming on board station are the shared meals. Uh, you know, just 10, 11, 12 people um, piled into that common area sharing meals, and it's always fun to see how, um, you know, different astronauts bring up different food items to share, um, you know, ones that might be, um, you know, more unique to the country that they're coming from or, or their culture. So that's a view, once again, using the thermal imager on board Dragon. Dragon, looking. SpaceX on the big loop for status. SpaceX Dragon, go ahead. We have a software, software override to disable the faulty hook five switch. We have verified through other telemetry that the hooks are all open and configured for docking. Software is testing this command and still needs a few minutes as this is a gate to resuming. No crew actions at this time. How copy? This x and thank you very much for the update. Copy, Steve, and we'll let you know when we've confirmed that testing and configured Dragon, and then crew will be primed to resume. SpaceX Dragon copies. We understand. Thank you. That's great news. From here at Mission Control in Hawthorne, Core David Wang has relayed to the crew. They believe they have a solution uh, for that faulty uh, hook. They're going to be testing that out, and then uh, hopefully very soon we'll be hearing that go for docking. In the meantime, uh, the crew appreciative of those words. They're continuing to stand by. Again, we're, we have plenty of margin to hold uh, here. Um, so we're just uh, wait for that command uh, to confirm uh, that, that the fix that they were, are relaying up to Dragon uh, has taken. And then uh, all teams will uh, they'll communicate a go to proceed with docking. Again, Josh Cassida and Nicole Mann inside the International Space Station monitoring. Flight control teams in Houston and Hawthorne. You can see there on the center screen um, the orientation of Dragon pointing towards the International Space Station. We now see a view from Dragon uh, using the onboard thermal imager to uh, basically keep eyes on the International Space Station. That um, light or white circle uh, in the center there is exactly where we are heading. That's the, the zenith port. Um, and you can actually see at the top of the screen, um, that is the Crew 5 capsule, um, Dragon Endurance, uh, docked at the, um, the other dock, the, the forward port. So, um, yeah, so in that center screen, you can, you, that bar at the bottom of the center screen is the International Space Station, and we can see Dragon's kind of pointing toward it. You can also see the crew rotating between available views uh, and, and GUIs or um, the, you know, the information that they uh, have available to them. So depending on preference, they can select what they want to see. Now the software override that they're uh, sending up to Dragon, commanding up to Dragon, that's uh, going to take a couple of minutes. In the meantime, we do have plenty of margin. In fact, uh, flight controllers are continuing to assess that margin and there's even more than they originally predicted. So there is plenty of time to work this, and you can see the crew just uh, standing by. There's no commands that need to be issued from inside Dragon, all of the commands being done from here on the ground. I think the crew might be using one of the tablets that they take with them to take some pictures. Um, it looks like they're 
perhaps trying to <laughs> see if they can see the ISS through the, the small window uh, located on that forward hatch. That's right. They have the displays right in front uh -huh. of them, so they can't bring it right up there. They have to sort of angle it near their knees. Yep. It looks like they got a couple of good ones, though. And unfortunately, because they have to remain, uh, you know, in their seats and um, buckled in, they uh, are unable to, um, you know, really be able to get up close to the windows to, to look out either. been uh, more than four, 24 hours uh, up to this point. And of course, they haven't had to remain in those seats for that full 24 hours. Shortly after Dragon separated from the Falcon 9 and they had good Dragon tr uh, uh, Draco engine checkouts, uh, they were able to doff their suits and mm -hmm. uh, essentially move freely about the cabin for um, much of their rendezvous time, so much of the 24 hours. Yeah, I believe it was actually uh, just as we were coming on air about two hours ago, um, the crew were just donning or putting their suits back on. Um, so yeah, you're exactly right. They right. spent the majority of that time um, in not their spacesuits. And again, we'll be continuing our coverage after a successful uh, hard dock uh, to the International Space Station. We'll hand it over to the Johnson Space Center to continue coverage. Uh, through the pressurization of the vestibule hatch opening and the welcome ceremony. You'll hear calls, uh, of course, once they have a successful hard mate to the International Space Station, they'll be able to get out of their suits again. You'll hear calls uh, that they'll be able to doff their suits and hang them out to dry. You could follow along with our coverage as we'll be continuing uh, throughout those next set of procedures. In the meantime, though, we're still looking good hanging at uh, 20 meters in front of the docking axis, that bright uh, white circle you see at the center of your screen from the cameras aboard the Dragon. We're uh, over the United States right now, over the East Coast at 259 statute miles on our northeastern track, following a, a similar trajectory that uh, the Falcon 9 took the uh, Dragon up the, north, um, the eastern seaboard along the east coast of Canada, Newfoundland. We'll even get close to, on this uh, pass over the Earth with the International Space Station and Dragon, we'll even get close to Shannon, Ireland. If you recall, during uh, Ascent, uh, the call out Shannon indicated, uh, was, was called out to the crew. It just indicates that uh, in an abort scenario, that's where they would be, that's where recovery assets would, would deploy. For those of you that have just recently joined, Crew 6 Dragon Endeavor is holding at Waypoint 2, about 20 meters away from the International Space Station, as we can see there, um, thanks to thermal cameras on board Dragon, that is the International Space Station, and we are heading toward that white circle right in the very middle. That is the Zenith port. That's where Crew 6 will be docking just minutes away. At this point in time, uh, we are we, we have all 12 uh, docking hooks open um, in preparation for docking. The teams here on the ground um, at SpaceX Mission Control are basically testing a software override um, as there is a um, faulty Hook 5 sensor. Um, but the vehicle is healthy. The crew um, also remains healthy, pretty comfortable, as you can see in their seats. No action required for them at this time. Um, and as, we, as Gary mentioned before, we, um, when this initially arose about five to ten minutes ago, um, we, were, we heard on the loops that there's two hours of margin um, within the schedule. Uh, basically, Dragon can hold this position uh, for the next two hours um, and still have that re-rendezvous capability if necessary. Uh, but it sounds like that manual software override um, was likely to be um, a successful solution. So we're just waiting on um, words from SpaceX core David Huang uh, to indicate if the teams have um, confirmed and uh, we'll be pushing that manual override to uh, the, the, the crew. 
And a, and a reminder that we are in joint operations too. A lot of the work being done here in Hawthorne. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop for status. Hey, Steve, just wanted to give you another update. We're still working through software testing and ensuring thorough verification. Expect more answers in approximately 10 minutes. SpaceX Dragon copy. We'll be standing here. So a reminder, it's uh, no actions on the crew side. You see they're just continuing to monitor all the systems on their end. Core David Wang here in uh, Mission Control in Hawthorne, confirming they need uh, another 10 minutes or so, so Pacific time. Uh, we're looking at uh, a little past 1020. If you're following along in Central time, it's uh, a little past midnight, 1220. AM Central Time. And that's just a status indicator uh, for the teams as they continue to work uh, this uh, software override commanded from the ground up to the Dragon. A reminder, uh, we'll continue to stress that um, there's plenty of margin to hold here. Teams are continuing to look at their propellant uh, that keeps Dragon stabilized in its current position. Uh, so it's not necessarily just holding uh, without firing. There are uh, thruster firings that have to happen to, in order to keep it at the position where it is. Last status update we got from the teams here in Hawthorne was it was trending in, uh, in a better direction than originally anticipated, meaning that it, we might actually exceed uh, the two-hour margin that was originally relayed to the crew. So we can use that if necessary. They'll continue to monitor, though, throughout the whole, they'll continue to get estimates on uh, the propellant that's used uh, as the teams uh, assess that software issue. Again, we're expecting now less than 10 minutes until a new status is related to the crew. So as Gary said, we are holding at waypoint two, about 20 meters away from the International Space Station. We're expecting more information in about 10 minutes um, as the teams on the ground here um, basically are, provide thorough verification that that software override uh, will fix that faulty hook five sensor. Um, there on the left-hand side of your screen is Commander Steve Bowen. Um, I'd like to take a minute to share a little bit more information uh, about his background. Um, he was born in Cohasset, Massachusetts and holds a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the U.S. Naval Academy and a master's in ocean engineering from the Joint Program in Applied Ocean Science and Engineering at MIT and Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. In July 2000, Bowen became the first submarine officer selected as an astronaut by NASA. This will be Bowen's fourth trip into space as a veteran of three space shuttle missions, STS-126 back in 2008, STS-132 in 2010, and STS-133 in 2011. Bowen has logged more than 140 days in space, including 47 hours, 18 minutes during seven spacewalks. As a mission commander, uh, as, as the Crew-6 mission commander, he will be responsible for all phases of flight on board Dragon from launch all the way through re-entry. Next, we have the pilot, Woody Hoberg. He's from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, earned a bachelor's degree in aeronautics and astronautics from MIT, and a doctorate in electrical engineering and computer science from the University of California, Berkeley. He's also a commercial pilot with instruments, single engine, and multi-engine ratings. The mission will be Hoberg's first flight since his selection as an astronaut in 2017. And as pilot, he'll be responsible for spacecraft systems and performance aboard Dragon. Sultan al Nayadi will be making his first trip to space, representing the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center of the United Arab Emirates. He will be the first UAE astronaut to fly on board a commercial spacecraft. On board Dragon, Al Nayadi will serve as a mission specialist working to monitor the spacecraft during the dynamic launch and re-entry phases of flight. He spent time in the UAE military prior to becoming one of the first two individuals selected by his country when they started their space program just a few years ago. 
And last but not least, Andrei Fedyaev will be making his first trip into space. He also serves as a mission specialist working to monitor the spacecraft through the dynamic launch and reentry phases of flight. He was selected as a cosmonaut in 2012 and uh, is now the second cosmonaut to fly aboard the SpaceX Dragon. Again, these roles are uh, when they are inside Dragon, but once we dock to the International Space Station, they'll become members of Expedition 68. As I mentioned before, one of the things I really look forward to seeing once um, there's a new crew on board is really just seeing everybody come together and um, share food at mealtimes. Um, and given the diversity within this crew um, and the crew members that are already on station, um, I think there will be some really great meals and stories, uh, excuse, really great meals and stories to be shared. That's right. Once we. Uh once we have the Crew-6 astronauts ingress, enter, the International Space Station will bring the population of station up to 11 crew members. That'll only be for a short time, though. We're looking at uh, approximately a five-day handover um, to allow uh, everybody to uh, get into their uh, respective roles uh, and responsibilities. Crew-5 will be handing over a lot of their responsibilities over to Crew-6. Um, it's uh, this is this direct handover allows uh, the crew five astronauts to brief uh, crew six on life aboard the International Space Station, get them familiarized with a lot of the systems on board. Of course, they've been training for months, sometimes years, uh, on a lot of the systems uh, aboard the International Space Station, but nothing like the real thing. So they'll give them a brief of uh, life aboard, make sure they're good to go, and then uh, crew five aboard uh, Dragon Endurance will enter their spacecraft and splash down off the coast of Florida. Yeah, it's incredible to think that uh, they were doing this exact same thing just six months ago. Right. Um, and as we heard uh, Josh Cassida mention earlier, he's excited for uh, the Crew 6 team to arrive, um, but also because it means that they get to go home and see their families soon. Um, so it's uh, it's been a, a, a lot of time conducting experiments. Um, that's, you know, one of the, the biggest things that uh, astronauts do on board the International Space Station. Of course, um, eating and sleeping and working out to maintain physical health while in that microgravity environment uh, is important. But one thing, one common theme that we hear from uh, crew members that return to Earth is just that it's uh, a very um, uh, busy schedule whenever you are on station. It's exactly that. It is a schedule. Um, as you mentioned before, Gary, the, the, the very shift planning, um, especially whenever there's a new crew coming up to the space station, it's a lot of coordination. A good reminder that it is a truly busy time. Uh, even now, we're, we have, uh, we're about to see uh, two dragons docked to the International Space Station. Definitely not the first time we've seen that. We've mm -hmm. had um, a lot of these handovers between crews aboard Dragon. You can actually see that Crew 5 capsule there yeah. at the top of that thermal image that was on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, so that's a view of the Crew 6 capsule holding there at waypoint 2, that 20-meter mark from the International Space Station. Um, but yeah, that thermal view that we keep getting coming from that capsule uh, from those uh, sensors there at the exposed region underneath the nose cone, uh, that forward um, hatch section, for, excuse me, the forward bulkhead section where that forward hatch is located. Um, we keep seeing that view of the International Space Station of those thermal imagers. And I just think it's so cool that there's <laughs> another Dragon capsule uh, there at, at the top of, of that thermal image that hopefully we'll, we'll be able to catch views of uh, momentarily. In the meantime, we got these great views of Dragon. You can sort of see those thruster firings, keeping Dragon in place. Again, the teams here in Mission Control and Hawthorne are tracking good propellant, uh, so we can hold here for quite some time. The sun is starting to rise as we enter into an orbital sunrise. Uh, the space station is 261 statute miles uh, over the Pacific Ocean, about to cross over Western Europe. Uh, but again, we're, we're holding until they actually dock and are welcomed by that crew, Expedition 68, that I was talking about. It's going to be it's going to be quite busy aboard uh, the station for a little bit, for uh, uh, ideally less than a week. Here's Expedition 68 right now, a multinational crew. They're all aboard the International Space Station. Uh, from the left, we have Frank Rubio, 
And uh, if we're ahead our, our way right, next is uh, Russian cosmonaut Dmitry Rutelin. Then uh, JAXA astronaut from the Japan Aerospicata. In the center are the two NASA astronauts that are monitoring the uh, approach and docking of Crew-6. Uh, first is Josh Cassida, and then Nicole Mann. That goes by the call sign Duke. If you hear Duke on the space to grounds, it's referring to Nicole Mann. The commander of the International Space Station right now is Sergei Prokopiev. And then on the far right is one of the Crew-5 crew members, Rus uh, Roscosmos cosmonaut Anna Kikina. So seven crew members aboard Expedition 68 aboard the International Space Station. We'll bring that population up to 11 uh, with Crew-6's arrival. Sounds pretty cozy. Yeah. Now, one thing I want to point out, while this view is gorgeous, it is incredibly deceiving. <laughs> it looks <laughs> like Dragon is just floating um, quite still, which couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, both the space station and the Dragon capsule are going uh, about 17,500 miles per hour orbiting planet Earth. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop for status. We have approximately nine, four minutes of hold time at waypoint two, limited by prop. Software testing is continuing and teams are working to get this right, not just fast. We'll come back with more updates. Six Dragon, we're standing by. So as we heard there from SpaceX core, David Huang indicating that the software team's still working on um, that software, uh, on that solution, um, likely a software override. Uh, they're providing thorough verification that that will solve that um, faulty sensor on hook five. Um, of course, those hooks are what are enable, or excuse me, what are required to uh, enable that hard capture to the International Space Station. Um, but you know, I, what he said there was was incredibly important. They're working to get it right, not just fast. Um, and um, you know, that's exactly right. Um, obviously, crew health is of, or excuse me, crew safety is of utmost importance, both for the crew on board. Uh, the crew, uh, crew, excuse me, on board Dragon Endeavor, but also the crew that is on board the station that you so perfectly went through with <laughs> remembering every single name in that order. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's exactly right. The teams are working to get it right, not just fast. Um, he also indicated that we have 94 minutes of margin remaining, um, so plenty of time to work through this. Um, that 94 minutes is um, basically the amount of time that the Crew 6 uh, team, or excuse me, the Crew 6 crew has in this position um, while still being able to um, uh, basically maintain capability to perform um, a re rendezvous. That's plenty of margin. And again, the flight control teams are continuing to assess that. Um, they'll, they continue to monitor the prop levels. And you can see, even on the right, uh, the camera from the ex external side of the International Space Station, you can see those firings of the Draco engines uh, keeping the Dragon in place, holding at 20 meters. Uh, that's what we're monitoring, that, those prop levels. Now, again, a quick reminder, um, that doesn't mean that uh, at the 94 minutes from now, we run out of prop. Right. Uh, it just means that uh, for, the, uh, for the hold position, we have about 94 minutes here. And then if we need to break out, there's plenty of prop to execute uh, additional maneuvers. Uh, they really try to minimize the prop usage on a, a nominal trajectory up there just for moments like this. Uh, if you need to hold for uh, two hours, you can hold for two hours. You have the prop in order to do that uh, and then uh, reassess later with, with the prop you need to execute uh, additional maneuvers. So right, And that's also partially why down to the second, it's precise um, in order to rendezvous with the International Space Station. Um, and just like you said, um, it's it's to that nominal ascent is the most efficient path, basically, to get to the International Space Station, so that there is um, uh, you know leeway or flexibility for situations like this, where these hold points are built in and that margin is available um, if necessary. So once again, Dragon continuing to hold there at waypoint two, 20 meters away from the zenith port of the International Space Station. Live views coming from inside Dragon Endeavor there on the left-hand side of your screen. 
Um, we have Commander Steve Bowen on that seat to the left, and to his right is Woody Hoberg, who is the pilot. Um, it seems like they have their arms up, but they are in uh, microgravity, so their hands are actually just floating there. Um, it's a pretty comfortable position. That view on the left-hand side of your screen is from Go Thrusters. As Dragon maintains its position, they're at waypoint two. As I mentioned before, uh, this view is a little deceiving because we can't see <laughs> um, you know, planet Earth for that frame of reference. So it looks like everything is just at a standstill, but of course it's orbiting Earth, uh, meaning it's, um, it's going incredibly fast. But I still in position, or, or it looks like it's still with relative position to the ISS. Right. It kind of looks black, too. Of course, there are plenty of stars in the sky, but uh, a lot of what's being played with with the camera on the outside of the station is exposure. Uh, the sun is illuminating the side of the capsule, so we're not able to make out a lot of the stars. There's also atmosphere that affects that. Um, so that's why you see that blackness. But there's going to be a lot of sunlight uh, from where we are now. Uh, the station is 261 statute miles over the Mediterranean Sea. It just passed the southern coast of Italy on the southeastern track. Uh, and it's uh, morning over in Europe, so it's going to make its way uh, southeast. We're going to be passing over Egypt soon um, and make our way down. And we'll be in this uh, sunlight position for a while. A reminder that this is uh, joint operations between uh, all the teams here in Hawthorne and, of course, the teams over in the International Space Station Flight Control Room in Houston, Texas. Everybody's got to give their go before proceeding uh, with docking today. But once we hear that, we'll start to see motion. The Dragon will make its way from this view down. It'll make its way uh, towards the Earth. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop for status. We have a software override command that will allow Dragon to continue to docking. Again, teams have verified that Dragon is in the correct docking configuration. Dragon will be sending the override command. Dragon will then pull for another go and then brief crew when ready to resume. I'll copy. On the big loop, you were cut off. Copy, Dragon. I'll repeat. We have a software override command that will allow Dragon to continue to docking. Again, teams have verified that Dragon is in the correct docking configuration. Brown will be sending the override command and then pull for another go. And then brief crew when ready to resume. I'll copy. All right, good news there coming from SpaceX core David Huang, letting the crew six know, letting the crew six crew. We've gone to our KU mask. We'll regain that at 0651, just for SA. We don't need it for docking. As we were saying before, uh, we just got confirmation that the teams here on the ground uh, will be pushing that software override through up to Dragon Endeavor, um, and that the um, there will be another poll for go for docking. Um, that and the crew will then receive final instruction, basically that final go. Um, so that if that override is being pushed through um, currently, that should take uh, hopefully just a couple of minutes. Um, as we said before, we had two hours of margin uh, to hold here at waypoint two, uh, 20 meters away from the International Space Station. So we're still well within that margin. Um, and as the SpaceX core indicated that the teams were looking to um, get it done right, not fast. And so uh, we're pleased to hear that the solution 
has been identified and is being pushed up to the capsule. And that call you heard from Mission Control in Houston up to Josh Casta is confirming that the KU link uh, is, is currently masked until 12.51 a.m. Central Time, 10.51 p.m. Pacific Time. Uh, so right now the teams on both sides Station are pulling. Houston on two for Frank and exercise. Uh, due to the exercise constraints with the uh, hold we're in, we're going to defer your 0 T2 offs and your a red that are hard scheduled for today. Thank you. That was Frank Rubio aboard the space station confirming. Unfortunately, he's going to have to delay his exercise for the day. Uh, the T2 being the stationary bicycle, A-RED being the uh, sort of a weightlifting machine that's configured for microgravity, so it uses hydraulics. Um, but they want to minimize loads, impacts, vibrations on the International Space Station for docking operations, so they're going to hold on that for a little bit. I was mentioning the KU mask. Uh, that's going to uh, be in effect until 10.51 p.m. Pacific, 12.51 uh, a.m. Central. Uh, which means uh, as the teams are polling, you see the flight control teams here in Hawthorne, they're also polling with the International Space Station flight control teams uh, to proceed past Waypoint 2 in for a docking. If we do that very shortly, we may not those teams to continue their poll. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop for approach two. SpaceX Dragon, Ground has pulled go for approach two. Confirm crew readiness for final approach and that visors are down. As a reminder that once Dragon is inside the crew hands-off point, retreat and breakout are not permitted. Hell copy. SpaceX Dragon copies all our visors are down and the crew is ready to resume. Copy Steve, Dragon is go to command resume. All right, so great news there coming from SpaceX Core indicating uh, that that poll for docking was conducted. SpaceX Dragon, we have resumed. The poll for docking was conducted once again. Dragon Here. is an approach to prep. Go for docking and we're now in prep for uh, um, to approach the International Space Station. It's a 30 second pause before the Draco engines start firing to get us closer to the International Space Station. So we'll hear another call once Dragon is in motion. Now again, Dragon is in approach two and continuing to station. Here we go. Station Houston on the big loop. Dragon is resuming approach and is go for docking. Monitor for steps five and six and one, that's a one zero two. Dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Station copies, we are in steps five and six. Now, if we can bring you views from inside the capsule, um, again, we will try. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any live views at the moment. Um, however, those crew displays that the crew has available to monitor progress, um, they actually will have a, a live camera um, basically showing how close they are to that, um, uh, the Zenith port. And uh, they are able to monitor the progress again, being able to see which uh, Draco thrusters are firing when. Um, but uh, we're looking forward uh, to seeing the crew um, continue on uh, this docking journey. <laughs> now, even though we don't have views, we are getting telemetry, so we're coming up on, uh, we are making some motion. It's just a little bit, uh, we, we did uh, increase a little bit of distance while we are at the hold point, so we got out to about 25 meters, so now we're making our way in. We're, we're at about 20 meters now. Uh, we'll stand by for contact and capture. You heard that reiteration from the ground of that crew hands off point. Uh, that will be called up to the crew. Um, it's called CHOP. Uh, they, they make an acronym for it. Um, so you'll, you'll know that the crew cannot is issue uh, an abort command at that point. Uh, but right now we're looking good. 18 meters in closing. Live view there of SpaceX Mission Control. 
That is where we've been hearing those core updates uh, come from. But at this point in time, Dragon is back uh, to uh, closing that distance, as Gary said, uh, closing that distance for docking. Uh, there will be a soft capture first, uh, then followed by hard capture. Um, we saw that soft capture ring in earlier views of the Dragon capsule. So that soft capture ring will be... Copy, 10 meters. A call from inside Dragon Endeavor, 10 meters in closing. We'll get those calls from the crew, including CHOP, and then confirmation of contact and capture. Visuals are not a requirement to proceed with docking, so even though we don't have KU, even though we don't have videos, we do have plenty of telemetry coming down to give us the confidence we need, and of course, uh, we have the crew aboard Dragon Endeavor and International Space Station uh, that are witnessing the action now. Once again, Dragon uh, is making its way, uh, closing the final meters uh, between itself and the International Space Station, specifically the Zenith port. It takes Dragon five meters. Copy, five meters. Only five meters to go. It's a slow and methodical approach. Progress seems to be good for the crew aboard Dragon. Of course, Josh Cassida and Nicole Mann are inside the International Space Station monitoring. There are safeguards in place if needed, but right now we're looking pretty good. Once again, we'll bring those live views whenever we have them. Unfortunately, they're not available at this moment in time, um, but those visuals are not required. Copy, two meters. The crew is monitoring, as you can tell from those callouts from inside uh, Dragon Endeavor. Uh, those meter. last meter to Copy, go. Copy, one meter. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, soft capture confirmed. It's like Dragon copy, thank you. That soft capture occurring at 10.40 p.m. Pacific time, 12.40 a.m. Central time. International Space Station and Dragon were 261 statute miles off the coast of Somalia in Eastern Africa. Great news there. Now, of course, uh, as we were saying before, everything is um, scheduled. It's it's step by step, and there are still a few steps to complete before Dragon. Soft capture ring retraction in progress. Still a few steps to go before Dragon is securely attached to the station. So there, we just heard the call out that that soft capture ring retraction was in progress. That soft capture ring is pulling the Dragon Endeavor in closer for the next series of steps, which will be closing those hooks. There are 12 hooks and they'll close uh, six at a time. And uh, once all 12 hooks are engaged, that confirms a hard capture. In the meantime, the on the International Space Station side, they're working an intricate series of uh, attitude control maneuvers to allow minimal loads during this uh, ring retraction process using a gyros and other thrusters, mostly disabled at this point. In the next couple minutes, we'll hear updates regarding the hard capture sequence. Um, we should hear a call out uh, in the next minute or two indicating um, that the hard capture sequence has begun. Uh, that will take about four minutes, um, and at that point in time, we will have a, a complete hard dock um, at which docking will basically be complete um, at that point in time. Of course, 
more time before the side hatch is opened and the crews get to greet each other on board station. Um, but as of right now, we have had confirmation uh, that the soft capture ring retraction um, is complete. That's the, the part that, as Gary just said, um, pulls the Dragon capsule in toward uh, the International Space Station. Um, and then next up, we will have that hard capture sequence start. Flight controllers are monitoring the uh, soft capture ring retraction and everything's looking good so far. They mentioned the soft capture ring, uh, the Dragon is inside the vestibule. So that's, that's important, it's pulling it in. Uh, lining up those hooks to begin that hard capture sequence that you were mentioning. Again, visuals are not a requirement for this process. We're getting plenty of telemetry and confidence from the teams on the ground. Things are proceeding nominally. Of course, those readouts from the crew, the board Dragon and the International Space Station monitoring as well. Everything's looking good. If you've recently joined, uh, Dragon had a pretty smooth uh, journey to the International Space Station. They launched from Kennedy Space Center. Uh, Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, ring retraction complete. Docking sequence is holding for MCS reconfiguration. It's next Dragon time. Flight control teams monitoring a good ring retraction. Right now they're pausing to allow International Space Station attitude to configure. I mentioned a series of intricate maneuvers to make sure to minimize the loads um, on the Dragon through the docking process. Once those hooks are engaged, they can go back to a nominal configuration. But in the meantime, we, uh, there's this pause. Of course, we'll be standing by for that hard capture sequence. Uh, we did uh, upload that software override for the hooks. That'll be an important milestone to make sure that those hooks engage for a hard capture. So we'll stand by and wait for that. But again, we did have a soft capture confirmed at 1040 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 1240 a.m. Central time. And again, the uh, ISS and the Dragon were off the coast of Somalia. Uh, in Eastern Africa at the time of docking. As I was saying earlier, the crew had a pretty smooth ride up to the International Space Station, lifting off um, just roughly over 24 hours ago from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And um, yeah, pretty smooth ascent phase. Uh, we did have that issue with hook five. Dragon Station, this is Houston on the big loop. MCS configured, proceeding with hook driving. Yeah, so the hook driving uh, is now about to begin. As I was saying, there um, was a, um, a, a software override um, that was sent up to the Dragon capsule from the, the teams on the ground in order to resolve the um, faulty sensor on hook five. Uh, that hook five being one of the hooks that is now being used to drive that hard capture. All in all, aside from that minor issue that the teams were able to resolve in um, a few minutes, um, a pretty smooth ride to space. I'm sure they're excited to um, eventually open the door and, and see their friends. The uh, hooks are deployed. Uh, there are 12 total hooks to help us have a hard capture. And they're uh, in two sets of six called gangs. The first gang of six, we're hearing good calls from the flight control teams they are driving as expected. Once again, Dragon Endeavor 
now underway with the hard capture, uh, driving of those 12 hooks, as Gary just mentioned, uh, operating in two sets of six. The first set uh, sounds like everything is going well, the second set to follow. And once hard capture is complete, that basically means that Dragon will have docked. Um, um, this is, uh, Dragon has driven itself autonomously to the space station, so at this point in time, the crew continues to monitor uh, the progress as those hooks drive, um, and they are following along with their crew displays, uh, and of course, listening in to information being provided from the teams here at SpaceX Mission Control, which you see there on your screen, uh, as well as from uh, the mission control team, mission control teams at Johnson Space Center over in Houston, Texas. Now, of course, we were holding at that 20 meter marker for some time. So if you're following along, uh, we're going to continue our coverage to make sure that the uh, hooks drive. On the big loop, we see is complete with one decimal one zero two. And we've got about 45 minutes to get this place straightened up. <laughs> Josh, we copy and concur. Sounds good. All right, and from the ground teams, we heard uh, the first gang of six hooks have, have driven, and they look like they're in a good configuration. The second set of hooks, another six, are currently driving. We'll continue to monitor the progress of those. Again, uh, once these hooks are driven, that is that hard dock uh, to the International Space Station. It kicks off another series of steps. Uh, they'll be able to doff or take off their suits once the uh, Dragon is fully engaged to the International Space Station for that hard dock, and they'll go through a series of steps to get those hatches open, and that'll take some time. Again, we were holding at that 20 meter hold point for quite some time. So if you're following along with our coverage and want to continue with our coverage, we'll hand it over to the Johnson Space Center to take us through hatch opening and the welcome ceremony. Everything is shifting slightly to the right. If you're following in central time, we're looking at hatches open approximately 2.18 and then a welcome ceremony around uh, 3 a.m. Uh, central time. Of course, those are approximate. We'll have to go through the procedures and we'll monitor uh, KU, but uh, just to give our viewers a uh, uh, a good indication of what we're looking at so far for those who want to uh, stick around uh, and see the astronauts of Expedition 68 welcome Crew 6 who are also joining Expedition 68. That's right. So as we said, the second set of hooks is uh, currently driving. The first set um, got good, inf uh, good readout there and uh, sounds like that first set of six uh, is complete. The second set of six now underway. Um, and as Gary mentioned, uh, still a number of steps to go through prior to on uh, prior to egressing Dragon Capsule and um, greeting the their their friends on board inter the International Space Station, um, as, such as being able to doff their suits. They'll be able to take their their suits off and store them. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Docking sequence complete or hard capture complete, correction. If I start and drop a hard disk capture complete. Beautiful view there from the uh, cameras on board the International Space Station. That is the Crew-6 capsule as it has uh, just completed the hard capture. Docking sequence not quite yet complete, but hard capture is complete. That is the zenith port of the ISS. That's a great indication of the hooks too. All 12 hooks are engaged in place, looking good. Next series of steps, that soft capture ring that was used in the first leg of the docking sequence is going to retract. There's also an umbilical uh, that is deployed from the Dragon and connects the Dragon uh, to the International Space Station. Dragon at this point has been relying on its batteries and the solar arrays that you can see, uh, that black portion of the unpressurized trunk that from this view is sort of at the top of where the Dragon is. 
has been relying on battery power, but once it's hooked up, it'll take some draw some power from the International Space Station, which of course has solar arrays to provide plenty of power through uh, once they configure the Dragon for the quiescent stage, where it will remain for uh, approximately six months while the Crew Six astronauts become expedition members and conduct science, maintenance, and upgrades for for the next six months in 2023. So at this point in time, we're just waiting to hear the uh, confirmation that the docking sequence is completed. Um, we're expecting the core to give a call to the crew to indicate that they can uh, doff their spacesuits and just to let them know that um, that entire docking sequence is complete. We did get confirmation that the hard capture portion was complete. Um, so awaiting that core, or excuse me, awaiting that call from SpaceX core. Once again, that is the Crew-6 capsule that just completed that hard capture uh, with those 12 hooks. Dragon, SpaceX, on the big loop. Docking sequence complete. Crew, Dragon, Endeavor, Steve, Woody, Sultan, Andre, after a brief scenic detour, welcome to the International Space Station. SpaceX Dragon copies, we're happy to be here. On behalf, behalf of SpaceX, it has been a pleasure working with you. Ground will be enabling Harlane power and comm connection shortly. You are go to doff suits per procedure 4.012 and we'll bring cameras external. All right, great news there from SpaceX core indicating that Dragon has completed its docking sequence, the spacecraft. Uh, Dragon, this is Houston on the big loop. Sultan, Andre, Woody, and Steve. Awesome, Mustafa. Dobry Pajalabat, and welcome to the International Space Station. Uh, from your training teams, your execution teams, and your friends and family, we're all so incredibly proud of you and are excited for your expedition. You guys uh, really are a living testimony that the ISS is a joint human effort, and your unique crew uh, truly exemplifies that. Now, let's work towards getting this hatch open so you can go hug your crewmates. And Houston, Dragon, Fox, all, thank you very much. It's, uh, and we're looking forward to a very good evening. So now that Dragon on Dragon to ground, no response required. Cameras are exterior. Dragon Station Expedition 68 welcomes you. We can't wait to get you aboard and inside the International Space Station. All right, now that Dragon has completed. Expedition Dragon copies are waiting on you, Josh. Now that yeah, I'm checking Optimus, I show you guys three days late. now that Dragon has completed the docking sequence, spacecraft must undergo a handful of checks before we will be able to open that hatch. The crew on board Dragon will now get a chance to get out of their suits uh, but more before moving into those hatch operations. That's right, and things will be picking up inside the station too as NASA's Josh Cassida gets the hatch on the station side ready to be opened, and then they start pressurizing that area known as the vestibule between the Dragon and the station hatches. So with Dragon fully docked, uh, that's going to do it for us here in Hawthorne, but our coverage for Crew 6 won't stop here. 
We're going to toss it over to Rob at Mission Control Houston to take us through the vestibule depressurization and hatch opening. And uh, when we'll see NASA astronaut Stephen Bowen, w uh, Woody Hoberg, along with United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi and Roscosmos cosmonaut Andrei Fedyayev float into the International Space Station. But first, quick recap of how they got here started um, several hours ago, more than I guess would be about 28 hours ago. Uh, they suited up in uh, the ONC building at Kennedy Space Center. Uh, they rode out to pad 39A. They had a successful ingress. Of course, a liftoff from Kennedy Space Center, pad 39A at 12.34 a.m. Eastern time today, technically. I had to check the <laughs> clock. <laughs> or excuse me, 12.34 a.m. Eastern time. And we had successful stage one landing, of course, Dragon separation, nose cone deploy. We saw that nose cone uh, open uh, as Dragon was approaching the International Space Station. Of course, those uh, five major burns that the capsule completed to get closer to the International uh, Space Station. And then we just had docking um, a couple minutes ago uh, on today, Friday, March 3rd. And again, that docking time was uh, 10.40 p.m. Pacific time. Uh 12.40 a.m. Eastern Time, or Central Time, rather, on the 3rd. So if you're tracking in Eastern Time, that's 1.40 a.m. And now that Crew 6 has arrived, we're looking ahead to the return of Crew 5. We'll be taking you along as Nicole Mann, Josh Cassida, Koichi Wakata, and Ana Kikina return home after their long-duration stay aboard the station. Teams are assessing return dates, which will be announced on NASA.gov, so be sure to tune in as NASA and SpaceX bring you live coverage every step of their journey. Be sure to follow SpaceX and NASA on social media for real-time updates. So thanks again for watching. Go NASA, go SpaceX, and go Crew 6, and of course Crew 5, too. We'll now hand it over to Rob at the Johnson Space Center in Houston to continue sharing the mission as the crew prepares to board their home for the next six months, the International Space Station. For those of you watching on the SpaceX YouTube channel, please head over to NASA TV to follow the coverage live. Sorry, I know it was really bad, but I couldn't resist. Yep, I've heard it up here at least three times. This is Mission Control Houston. Thanks uh, a lot to uh, Gary and Kate for carrying the uh, water as uh, we moved into a docking at the International Space Station just a few minutes ago at uh, 12.40 a.m. Central Time, 1.40 a.m. Eastern Time, about 23 minutes behind schedule to allow the engineers at SpaceX in Hawthorne to complete uh, some troubleshooting with their software uh, for one of the hooks Again, the engineers at Hawthorne uh, spent just a few minutes playing it safe, making sure that uh, the software uh, was uh, properly configured for one of the hooks and the docking mechanism for the uh, Crew Dragon Endeavor. 
a bit of uh, balky software that uh, gave a micro switch indication that it was not in the right configuration even though the hooks were verified to be open and in good shape. So it took uh, just a few extra minutes to verify that uh, software and the command was issued to override the software and allow uh, Dragon to reinitiate its final approach the final few meters for contact capture and 11 minutes later the closing of all of those hooks to form a hard mate for the vehicle to the uh, zenith port, the space facing port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station that you see right there in the field of view. The uh, International Space Station and uh, the newly arrived Crew 6 crew are uh, currently flying 260 miles above the planet as uh, the work now will uh, focus on uh, the leak checks that will be conducted on the station side of the docking interface between Endeavour and the Harmony module. Once those leak checks are complete, pressure in the small uh, passageway or vestibule that connects uh, the Crew Dragon with Harmony will be conducted to make sure that uh, we have uh, pressure e equalized between the two vehicles before the hatches are open. By uh, docking just a few minutes behind schedule, uh, we are expecting a hatch opening to occur somewhere in the neighborhood of about 2.18 a.m. Central Time. Of course, that's not an exact science, so we'll be standing by for updates as uh, we move along here. With the welcoming ceremony, the uh, Crew 6 crew coming on board to be greeted by their Expedition 68 counterparts that they will join now for the next several days and uh, for the next several days until Crew 5 departs. The uh, welcoming ceremony expected just after 3 a.m. Central Time, 4 a.m. Eastern Time. If you're wondering about the demarcation of these expeditions, the uh, newly arrived Crew 6 crew of Steve Bowen, Woody Hoberg, Sultan al Niadi, and Andrei Fedyaev, they will join the International Space Station as Expedition 68 crew members. They will become Expedition 69 crew members on March 28th when the uh, Soyuz MS-22 vehicle, the damaged vehicle that incurred a coolant leak back in mid-December, when that vehicle undocks, that will mark the official beginning of Expedition 69. Once uh, the welcoming ceremony is complete, there'll be a safety briefing that will span about 30 to 45 minutes, led by Station Commander uh, Sergei Prokopiev of Roscosmos, before the crew presses ahead uh, to uh, have a meal on board the station and uh, to begin uh, the handover that will span a about the next five days, leading to the departure of the Crew 5 crew, Commander Nicole Mann and uh, crewmates Josh Cassida, uh, Koichi Wakata of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency and Ro Roscosmos cosmonaut Anna Kikina. They are scheduled uh, to depart the station around March 9th. A specific undocking date is going to be uh, analyzed and selected over the next few days. Say again. ISS power connection established.
right on through. on the big loop. Sorry, I missed that call. We got some pissing and probably 30 seconds left of the timer. Josh, we copy. I'll wait till the hit thing's done. This is Mission Control Houston. Once again, you're looking at the newly arrived Crew Dragon Endeavor, hard mated to the international docking adapter on the space facing port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. Within uh, the next few minutes, leak checks uh, will be initiated uh, to begin the process over the next orbit of the Earth to ensure that we have a tight seal at the docking interface between Endeavor and the Harmony module. Houston Station on the big loop. Uh, step 2.3 is complete and time is 0709. Josh, we copy 0709 and uh, the call I was going to make earlier was, hey, we would love to come on board with you if you all will get us an internal view. Absolutely, no problem. Uh, let's see, would you like no to camera one or two? Oh, Josh, you're putting the pressure on me. Make me make a decision. Uh, we'll go with node 2, 2. Thanks. Okay, copy that. And in fact, uh, Frank has got these set up. So node 2, number 2 is looking station forward. And node 2, uh, camera 1 is looking zenith for our crewmates. Josh, we copy that. Sounds great. We'll take both. And uh, here in the uh, space station flight control room, spacecraft communicator David Brenna, working uh, with the team under the direction of lead flight director Pooja Jasrani, talking to Josh Cassida on board the station, confirming uh, the configuration and setup of the television cameras in the uh, Unity module of the International Space Station and the Harmony module. We're going to be coming on board into uh, the Harmony module to which uh, the Crew Dragon Endeavor is docked. Once again, uh, we're going to be coming on board uh, inside uh, the Harmony module of the International Space Station at the hatchway to the docking interface, the vestibule as it's called, and there's, there's your view. Work uh, will be underway by Josh Cassida and others uh, to uh, configure all of the, the equipment and to conduct the leak checks at that docking interface over the next uh, orbit 
to ensure that we have a, a tight seal and uh, the precursor to the equalization of uh, vestibule pressure that will be uh, the stepping stone towards uh, the opening of the hatch to allow the crew six quartet, Steve Bowen, Woody Hoberg, Sultan al Niadi, and Andrei Fedyaev to float on board the International Space Station and to be greeted by their seven colleagues who have been living on board the station for some time now. Inside the International Space Station, Nicole Mann, who's the commander of the uh, Crew Dragon Endurance that will be departing uh, the International Space Station next week to complete uh, a six-month tour of duty on board the complex. The uh, Crew Dragon Endeavor launched uh, in the early morning hours of March 2nd, just over 24 hours ago, docking to the zenith port of the Harmony module of the station at 12.40 a.m. Central Time, 1.40 a.m. Eastern Time, setting up uh, for the opening of the hatches that's expected uh, around 2.18 a.m. Central, give or take a few minutes. And about 40 minutes later, we are expecting a welcoming ceremony somewhere in the neighborhood of 3 a.m. Central, 4 a.m. Eastern Time. Dragon, Houston on the big loop. Stand by for Heartland Audio Config. The International Space Station and the newly arrived Crew Dragon Endeavor flying 260 miles over the South Pacific. SpaceX Dragon copies on the big loop. Just uh, to the northeast of New Zealand, as you look at Nicole Mann and Josh Cassida of the Crew 5 crew, as they uh, are awaiting uh, the opening of the hatch, they'll be conducting leak checks and checks uh, of the integrity uh, at the vestibule, the small passageway that connects uh, the Harmony module to the hatchway of Dragon before the uh, green light is given for the hatches uh, to be open and for the Crew 6 crew to float on board, expanding the population of the station from 7 to 11.
and Dragon on Dragon the Ground, no response required. Ground will be clearing the docking hooks not open alert from your displays. SpaceX Dragon copies will be watched. We should be getting a video from inside Dragon as uh, Steve Bowen and his crewmates uh, begin the preparation on their side of the docking interface for their own series of leak checks and uh, preparations leading to the hatch opening on their side of the docking interface. Hardline audio configuration is complete. How do you hear me? Copies, uh, how do you hear us? Dragon Houston hears you five by five. Houston, space, dragon copy. Hey, Senpai, Josh, we're getting some time crunches here. Okay, copy that, thanks. Initial uh, leak checks on uh, both sides of the docking interface are in progress. Everything uh, proceeding uh, as planned for the opening of the hatches, uh, allowing uh, Crew 6 to come on board for the beginning of their half year in space. You see Koichi Wakata from the uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, who uh, has been uh, working during uh, this rendezvous time frame in the uh, Kibo module, that is the hatchway just off to the left of your screen. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon Ground, low priority. Go ahead. Hey, what do you get? We're just looking for permission to come on board with cameras when ready. Copy that. Uh, we got a few crew members changing, so we'll give you a call in a few minutes and you'll be welcome to come on board then. Copy all, Woody. on board Dragon acknowledging that the crew is uh, in the process of getting out of their launch and entry suits and uh, getting into more comfortable clothing as they uh, prepare for the leak checks on their side of the docking interface. We should be able to uh, come on board.
to see activities inside Dragon here just a short time from now. Station Dragon, this is Houston on two for timeline. Uh, Josh, you asked us a question regarding when you think hatch opening is going to be happening. Uh, we're estimating about 45 minutes from now. And also for today's timeline in general, we're expecting to be about uh, 20 minutes down. And we're going to just look for activities that are looking for that we can uh, punt off of today's timeline as, as we can get to those. But uh, we expect to be about 20 minutes delta to today's timeline to the right. David, and I'm not sure if that was on two or three. I'm on three now. Understand about 45 minutes to hatch opening and 20 minute delta for the rest of the day. Thanks. Houston Dragon copy. 20 minutes down, hatch opening 45 from now. I'd like that was on two. And station copies all. Thank you, David. And uh, Josh, back with you on two, just to follow up for the PO event. We're expecting that to be between 845 and 900. Okay, station cops. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, just a bit of a refinement on uh, the times for events coming up. Uh, spacecraft communicator David Brenner here in Mission Control uh, reporting uh, to the crew on board uh, the International Space Station. We are expecting a hatch opening about uh, 45 minutes from now. That would be about 2.10 a.m. Central Time, 3.10 Eastern Time, if that timeline is correct. The welcoming ceremony is expected uh, somewhere between about 2.45 and 3 a.m. Central Time. So if you're keeping track of events here in the deep overnight, uh, that's where we're headed. And we'll keep you posted as uh, any of those times get refined. Again, docking occurred at uh, 12.40 a.m. Central Time, about 23 minutes behind the original schedule, with the hooks closing to form a hard mate between uh, Crew Dragon Endeavor and uh, the Harmony Module's International Docking Adapter on the Space Facing Port at 12.51 a.m. Central Time.
Once uh, the uh, Crew 6 crew members are on board and we conduct the welcoming ceremony, the uh, 11 crew members on board will engage in a uh, safety briefing, which is customary. That'll be led by Station Commander Sergei Prokopiev before handover activities begin and uh, the start of orientation for the newly arrived crew members on the International Space Station. Steve Bowen, no stranger to the space station, albeit uh, his three previous missions were during the assembly phase of the International Outpost. His crewmates, Woody Hoberg, Sultan al Nayadi, and Andrei Fedyaev, are of course first-time flyers. Central station on three for fridge. Duke, you must be psychic. I was just about to call you. I had a feeling. Let me know what I need to do. Yeah, we are seeing trouble with Fridge 2, uh, so if you don't mind shutting it down uh, for us, just tap the screen, hit the power button in the bottom left, press OK to shut it down. Okay, copy. I'm in work. Once it starts shutting down, it's eventually going to say safe to power off. Once it says safe to power off, you're going to switch bridge to the power switch on the galley control panel. At the bottom of the rack, you're going to switch that off. Payload controllers at uh, the Payload Operations Center in Huntsville, Alabama, at the Marshall Space Flight Center, talking to Nicole Mann on board the station. Once uh, the uh, safety briefing is concluded, uh, and uh, a few hours of orientation for the newly arrived crew members gets underway. The uh, 11 crew members will go in into an extended sleep period throughout the day on Friday, uh, catching their breath after a fairly like hectic week of activities. Handover activities between uh, the Crew 6 crew and the Crew 5 crew will span uh, over the next uh, five days in order uh, to make sure that the Crew 6 is all set to begin its increment in earnest. The Crew 5 crew members are scheduled to undock from the space station somewhere in the neighborhood of around March 9th a uh, specific date uh, will be further refined likely early next week after uh, the ballistic trajectory of deorbit opportunities and weather conditions are assessed by both SpaceX, the Commercial Crew Program, and the International Space Station Program. Koichi Wakata of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency and uh, Josh Cassida working uh, to begin uh, setting up cameras that will document hatch opening and uh, the welcoming ceremony. Again, we expect hatches to open somewhere uh, in the neighborhood of about 2.10 a.m. Central Time with a welcoming ceremony to follow somewhere between 2.45 and 3 a.m. Central Time. On uh, Thursday, uh, Roscosmos cosmonauts Sergei Prokopiev, who is the station commander, and Dmitry Patelin transferred their uh, custom-made Soyuz seat liners from the damaged Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft over to the newly arrived Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft that will be their ride home later this year with NASA's Frank Rubio. Rubio will transfer his Soyuz seat liner that's temporarily parked uh, in the Crew-5 Crew Dragon Endurance over to the newly arrived Soyuz vehicle next Monday. And Koichi, we're checking.
station, Houston on Space Ground 3 for Koichi and Node 2 view. We will want to be using the Node 2 2 camera for the PO event. Okay, copy uh, camera 2 of Node 2. Thank you. Station Houston on Space Ground 3 for Josh. Go ahead on 3, David. Hey Josh, leak check's complete, you're a go to proceed with ingress part two and step three decimal one, you have a go to open the APEX equalization valve. Okay, we're in work.
This is Mission Control Houston, uh, Nicole Mann on the right hand corner of your screen and at the hatchway to the Crew Dragon Endeavor is Josh Cassida doing a visual inspection of uh, the area right at the hatch where uh, pressure is in the process of being equalized, part of the leak check process that will lead uh, to the opening of the hatches somewhere in the neighborhood of about uh, 2.10 a.m. Central Time about 25 minutes or so from now. We're expecting the welcoming ceremony where the Crew 6 uh, crew members will join uh, the rest of the Expedition 68 crew and become part of that Expedition 68 crew. That uh, welcoming ceremony will be somewhere between 2.45 a.m. and 3 a.m. Central Time, after which uh, the 11 crew members on board the station will uh, conduct a uh, joint safety briefing conducted by Russian uh, Roscosmos cosmonaut Sergei Prokopiev, part of the standard operating uh, procedures that uh, will set the stage for the start of about a five-day handover. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon Aground for status. And SpaceX Dragon, go ahead. Hey, just wanted to check in and see uh, if we could come back on board. Uh, you can come on board. Copy.
Cameras are back on board. Station on to the A pass hatch is open and there is zero condensation. Station Houston, we copy, great news.
and uh, the Harmony module docking port at the International Space Station ongoing and uh, going very well. We're expecting uh, hatch opening sometime in the next uh, 20 minutes, perhaps a bit sooner. We'll uh, keep you updated on uh, all of that activity. The welcoming ceremony between uh, the crew members, the newly arrived Crew 6 crew members, who will join uh, their Expedition 68 crewmates, is expected uh, somewhere between about 2.45 a.m. and 3 a.m. Central Time. Docking occurred at uh, 12.40 a.m. Central Time. Endeavor uh, held about 20 meters away from its docking port on the space-facing side of the Harmony module for several minutes uh, to allow SpaceX engineers to psych out a uh, software issue with uh, one of the hooks. The hook itself was uh, operating in a nominal configuration, but uh, a micro switch indicating its performance uh, was being a bit balky. So the SpaceX engineers had to uh, test out a software patch and once uh, that was verified, uh, the command was given to override uh, that micro switch and to proceed in the final 20 meters for docking. Nicole Mann in the foreground, uh, right at the hatchway, is Josh Cassida wearing the headlamp as uh, they continue uh, leak checks on their side of the docking interface. They'll be joined uh, by Koichi Wakata. Anna Kikina, Sergei Prokopiev, Dmitry Patelin. Eleven crew members uh, will be on board the International Space Station for about the next five days or so. A, uh, an official departure date for the Crew 5 crew, that being Mann, Cassida, Wakata, and Kikina, will be uh, likely determined early next week after ballistics, trajectory uh, information, deorbit opportunities, and uh, weather is assessed by uh, the International Space Station and commercial crew programs, SpaceX and uh, NASA officials who will uh, discuss the best options uh, for bringing uh, the Crew-5 crew home. Once uh, the hatches are open, and uh, the, there's Frank Rubio now in the field of view, he will be transferring his uh, custom-made Soyuz seat liner from the uh, Crew-5 uh, Dragon Endurance, where it is temporarily housed, into the newly arrived Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft that is docked to the Poisk module of the International Space Station. That uh, Soyuz seat liner transfer will uh, accompany the uh, Soyuz seed liner transfer that Prokopiev and Patelin undertook uh, on Thursday, and that uh, will put the Soyuz MS-23 in a uh, ready-made departure capability and uh, will uh, complete uh, the work necessary to bring uh, that newly arrived Soyuz back into full uh, return capability for Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin who will uh, return to Earth in that uh, newly arrived vehicle later this year. For Dragon Hatch equalization. Nicole Mann reporting uh, that uh, we're ready uh, to equalize uh, the pressure on both sides of the docking interface right at that vestibule juncture point.
Houston Station on 2, Comptec. Station Houston on 2, we hear you loud and clear. Sorry, I should have given you a checking. Uh, yeah, we copy you're ready. Uh, Dragon crew is still working through some procedures, and they're getting there, but it's going to be a bit... Thank you. Should be about 20 minutes or so, so you guys uh, have some time. Dragon SpaceX low priority on Dragon to ground. There's a view inside the Crew Dragon Endeavor that uh, docked to the International Space Station about an hour and 25 minutes ago. The uh, four crew members out of their launch and entry suits and into more comfortable flight clothing as they uh, prepare to open the hatch on their side of the docking interface and move inside the Harmony module to be greeted by uh, there are soon to be Expedition 68 colleagues. The uh, Expedition uh, designation of Expedition 68 is still in progress and will continue until the undocking on March 28th of the damaged Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft that will make an uncrewed parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. At the point of undocking of MS-22, Expedition 69 will begin, still under the command of Roscosmos cosmonaut Sergei Prokopiev. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon Ground for Timeline. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to Ground for Timeline.
Dragon SpaceX on the big loop for crew timeline. SpaceX Dragon's with you. Hey, what are you, yeah, we're just looking for a timeline. Um, do we have suits drying yet? We are 57 minutes into the suit drying. We tried to call you earlier on Dragon to Ground with no joy. Uh, so three minutes left on suit drying, and then we'll be, uh, that's the blocker to most of the rest of our procedures. Yeah, copy. Uh, you are actually go for four decimal 400 sections one through three. So we'll be ready to record your inventory when ready. Okay, copy, go for four decimal, 400, one, sections one, two, three. As we uh, stand by for the uh, completion of the pressure equalization uh, between uh, the two hatches, Crew Dragon Endeavor and Harmony, you're looking at uh, Roscosmos cosmonaut Anna Kikina, who is in uh, the final days of her six-month stay aboard the International Space Station. Station Houston on Space to Ground 2 for any available U.S. West crew member for a scene and voice check. and I can uh, knock that out here in 02. Hey, Frank, we copied. Thanks. Yeah, we figured while you're waiting, let's go ahead and knock that out of the way. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, no response required. You are go for okay, sections one station. through five on four decimal four hundred. Houston Station on two, ready for senior voice check when you're ready. Frank, we are ready.
Great, that was a good audio check. If we could get the camera view uh, leveled, um, just try to level it out with the uh, forward bulkhead. Okay, how does that camera view work for you guys? Frank, that is fantastic. You have the magic touch. We're good with both video and audio. Okay, sounds great. Thanks so much. Station Houston on Space Ground 2 for Frank for scene. What up, Hey, Frank, those, uh, looks like there's an Ethernet cable and another cable that are uh, in the scene on the starboard side. If there's any way you could just tuck those cables out of the way. Um, yeah, if you're looking at the camera, exactly, that's it right there. If you could just tuck those out of the way, and that way uh, they won't be in the way of any of the 11 crew members that are going to fit in there. That'd be great. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we're nearing uh, the completion of the pressure equalization across the hatchway between the Crew Dragon Endeavor and uh, the Harmony module of the International Space Station as uh, the Expedition 68 crew members, uh, Frank Rubio in the field of view, Koichi Wakata had just floated out of the field of view, are preparing uh, for the opening of the hatch. There he is, there's Wakata. Uh, the hatches uh, will be opened and uh, we'll be starting a welcoming ceremony just uh, a few minutes after that uh, to greet uh, the newly arrived Crew 6 crew, Commander Steve Bowen, Pilot Woody Hoberg, and Mission Specialists Sultan al Nayadi and Roscosmos cosmonaut uh, Andrei Fedyaev. There is uh, al Nayadi aboard the uh, Crew Dragon Endeavor embarking uh, on the first long-duration space flight by an Emirati astronaut. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop uh, for a crew timeline. SpaceX Dragon's with you, go ahead. 
Yeah, due to the earlier delays, we're a little behind on the timeline, but understand crew are working through procedure 4.400. We'd like you to focus on completing sections 1 through 5 in order to support Dragon Hatch open. Um, we can come back for a suit uh, stowage at a later time. Okay, we copy. Uh, we looked at section one of four decimal four hundred, and we saw we need to buckle all the seatbelts. So we were trying to get the suits out of the way for that. Uh, confirm we can just hold off on that step to one decimal five for now. Yeah, confirm. We can come back to that. Um, but uh, the inventory and section five for the waste system flush is uh, critical to complete prior to hatch open. We copy, we'll put that work right now. Copy all, and just uh, looking at the commander cam, it looks like we still have a cap on there. Once again, uh, the view inside the uh, Crew Dragon Endeavor, a good view on the right of uh, Commander Steve Bowen. That's beautiful, thanks and pilot Woody Hoberg in the foreground. Just a few minutes away from a hatch opening to be followed by a welcoming ceremony and then a safety briefing for all 11 crew members comprising the expanded Expedition 68 crew. Endeavour docked uh, to the Zenith port, the space-facing port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station, a little uh, less than two hours ago at 12.40 a.m. Central Time, 1.40 a.m. Eastern Time. Hooks closed uh, 11 minutes later to form a hard mate uh, between the two spacecraft. Leak checks have been ongoing and are nearly complete, and pressure at the docking interface is being equalized uh, as the forerunner to the opening of the hatch.
the uh, crew six crew on board uh, the Dragon Endeavor that you're watching right now in the final stages of securing their spacecraft prior to hatch opening. Woody Hoberg uh, in the foreground, Sultan Al Niyadi uh, behind him. Suits are being stowed. Pressure is being equalized uh, across the docking interface between uh, Crew Dragon and uh, the Harmony module. That will be the precursor to the opening of the hatch and the uh, start of a welcoming ceremony involving all 11 crew members of Expedition 68. The Crew 5 crew of Nicole Mann, Josh Cassida, Koichi Wakata, and Anna Kikina are due to uh, depart the International Space Station late next week, a date yet to be firmly selected uh, by uh, the commercial crew program and the International Space Station program. That uh, departure date will be evaluated based on uh, the orbit opportunities and the weather forecast and will come into clearer focus early next week. Station Houston on Space Ground 2 for Frank. Hey Frank, we just wanted to give you a rundown of our plan for uh, the PO event. So um, after hatch opening, we'll give you guys like 5 to 10 minutes and then just call us when you're ready to start the PO event. How's that sound? That sounds great. And are we still uh, going to be on with uh, Kathy, Ken, and Hamad? And a Frank, yes, there will be no Ken. Sorry. just uh, Kathy and Hamad. Hey, and just uh, for a little coordination, I know the back and forth that's on the, um, the Word document, um, but after I kind of say, um, you know, we hear you loud and clear, I'll say a quick welcome, but I would also like to hand it off to Sergey as the uh, commander and just give him a chance to say hi, and then we'll turn it over to Kathy. Great, that sounds great. That's a good plan. SpaceX ready to copy. All right, I'll start with water. We consumed all five bottles from location 203, all five bottles from location 207, and three bottles from location 208. Copy, five bottles from location 203, five bottles from location 207, and three bottles from location 208.
Again, uh, a good view inside uh, the Crew Dragon Endeavor as uh, the Crew 6 crew, having arrived at the International Space Station, completing the final stowage of equipment uh, before uh, hatch opening that will enable them uh, to move inside the complex that will be their home for the next half year. SpaceX ready to copy. Okay, from location 301, we consumed two snacks and two dinners. From location 302, we consumed two breakfasts. Location 309, one breakfast. And location 310, two snacks and two dinners. Copy from location 301, two snacks and two dinners. From location 302, two breakfasts. From location 309, one breakfast. And from location 310, two snacks and two dinners. module of the International Space Station. From left to right, Koichi Wakata, Josh Cassida, Anna Kikina, as uh, the final few steps of uh, the equalization of pressure across uh, the docking interface is underway. That uh, should all be in order just a moment or two from now, leading to the opening of the hatch.
Uh, standing by is uh, the Crew 6 crew, still on board the uh, Crew Dragon Endeavor. Complete uh, the final stowage of some of the equipment that they used and their suits that they rode uh, to orbit in. And uh, for the final phase of today's uh, rendezvous and docking to the space-facing uh, port of the Harmony module. Meanwhile, inside Harmony, awaiting hatch opening, Anna Kikina on the left, Josh Cassida on the right. Houston on space ground two. Uh, we're still looking at five to ten minutes before hatch opening. SpaceX Dragon, we are in section six of Ford SL 400. We are ready for Dragon Hatch equalization. Copy, Dragon, ready for your hatch equalization. Dragon Station, this is Houston. Standby for equalization expected to take two minutes. This is Mission Control Houston, so the final step of equalization of pressure across the docking interface uh, about to begin, it will take about two minutes for that pressure to be equalized, and that uh, should be the final step prior to hatch opening. Once the hatch opens and uh, the Crew 6 crew floats on board the station, uh, it will take just a few minutes for them to get set up 
for the welcoming ceremony involving all 11 crew members to greet uh, the newly arrived uh, Crew 6 Quartet of Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg, who you see in the field of view, along with Emirati astronaut Sultan Al-Niyadi and Roscosmos cosmonaut Andrei Fedyaev. Sultan al Niyadi at the top of your screen, uh, the second Emirati astronaut to fly in space. And uh, at the beginning now of uh, what will be the first long duration flight by an Emirati astronaut. Pressure across the docking interface about to be completed as uh, the Crew 6 crew prepares uh, to open the hatch and come on board the International Space Station. It has been uh, just a, a shade over two hours since uh, Endeavour docked to the space facing port of the Harmony module that occurred at 12.40 a.m. Central Time, 1.40 a.m. Eastern Time. You are go for hatch opening per decal, followed by the remaining actions in Procedure 4.400, Section 6. How copy? Copy. We have a go for hatch opening per decal and 4.400, Section 6. 
It's good to be back, Steve. to the Crew Dragon Endeavor is open at uh, 2.45 a.m. Central Time, 3.45 a.m. Eastern Time. Again, Dragon's Hatch opened at 2.45 a.m. Central, 3.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You see uh, the rest of the Expedition 68 crew now gathering at the hatchway in the Harmony Module. Station Commander Sergei Prokopiev on the right joined uh, by his Roscosmos colleagues, Anna Kikina and Dmitry Patelin. The other NASA and JAXA astronaut uh, crew members uh, will be joining uh, just a moment or two from now as the station hatch will shortly be opened and uh, the Crew 6 crew will float on board. Hatch opening occurring again at 2.45 uh, a.m. Central on the Dragon side as uh, the International Space Station flew 260 miles off the southeast coast of Australia. Steve Bowen, on board the International Space Station. Woody Hoberg, now on board. Sultan al Nayadi comes on board the International Space Station. And Andrei Fedyaev. So the Crew 6 board, is, the Crew 6 crew is now on board the International Space Station. They'll uh, take a few minutes uh, to uh, complete uh, greetings uh, between each other before they set up uh, for the welcoming ceremony. a crew of 11 crew members for the next week.
occurring at 2.45 a.m. Central Time, 3.45 a.m. Eastern Time. The International Space Station was flying at an altitude of 260 miles off the southeast coast of Australia. The uh, Crew 6 crew on board, veteran Steve Bowen and three first-time flyers, joining Nicole Mann, Josh Cassida, Koichi Wakata, and Anna Kikina, along with Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin and Frank Rubio, who's at the hatchway right next to Sultan al Niyadi, the first Emirati astronaut to embark on a long duration space flight, the second Emirati astronaut to fly in space. board the station now for the fourth time. His first three flights were all assembly missions on the uh, space shuttle. We'll be ready to start the PAO event in about three to four minutes. We copy. Sounds great. And uh, we are expecting uh, the welcoming ceremony to begin about three minutes from now. The crew are getting set up. The first opportunity to hear from uh, the Crew 6 crew after arriving on board the International Space Station with docking having occurred at 12.40 a.m. Central Time, followed 11 minutes later by the closing of the hooks to form a hard mate between the Crew Dragon Endeavor and uh, the Harmony module. Hatches were opened at 2.45 a.m. Central Station Time. Station Houston Space Ground 2 for COM. For this PO event, we will have a loss of uh, KU all the handover from 914 to 915, so you'll lose audio and video with your party at that time. Okay, station copies. 914 to 915. That's affirmative, and we'll pick it back up once we uh, get AOS for KU. Okay, we copy, and uh, are you going to let us know right before that so we'll uh, stop with whatever comments are going on at that moment? We're checking, Josh. Josh, back with you guys on two. Uh, if we find a convenient spot to give you a heads up, we'll do that. But if we're in the middle of the event, uh, we'll just lose you and pick you back up on the other side. Okay, 
Okay, we copy that. Uh, just a heads up, we do have Space Ground 3 up. If you wanted to pass it there, uh, then it wouldn't make it to the outside world, but we'd hear you. I'll give you guys a call on three when we're about to lose our KU, and then you guys can just continue with the event. Sounds great, David. Thank you. All right, David, we are set up. If you want to do one more scene check with the uh, entire crew, I think we're in our uh, positions. Let us know how this works for you. You guys look outstanding. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. We are ready for the event. NASA Leadership, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Kathy Leaders. How do you hear me? Kathy, we have you loud and clear. It's great to hear your voice. Well, I'm really, you, we created a little bit of anticipation there at the end for the crew six folks making you wait a little bit longer before you got to station. But as always, it's so great to see you all go come safely through the hatch and join your crew members on station. You know, this is gonna be a next six months are just gonna be packed <laughs> full of very critical events. And one of the first critical events is getting your crew five uh, crewmates um, ready to come and come back down to earth. Um, but we're really looking forward to all the great science, hopefully a couple of EVAs and updates on some new solar arrays, and uh, you'll have a few more crew vehicles coming up during this period of time too. So um, as always, we're super proud of you and looking forward to all the great things you'll be doing. And I'm proud to um, introduce uh, Hamad Almansori, and hopefully he's here on the line too to be able to give you some comments. All right, Kathy, well, thank you so much. Yeah. We couldn't agree more. While we wait for... Uh, there's Samad, great. We are uh, ready for your comments, Samad. Thank you. Astronaut Steve, Woody, Sultan, and Cos Cosmonaut, Andre, and little astronaut, Sohail. Congratulations to all of you on your successful arrival to the International Space Station. Your mission to space represents a huge milestone for SpaceX NASA and the United Arab Emirates. Crew 6, you become part of our community back home in the United Arab Emirates. Please allow me to say a few words in Arabic. Burashid, salam alaikum. Tistahirun salamat al-usul lil-mahata al-dualiyya. Thigatna fikum kibira. Anta liyom ma tmathil al-Imarat faqat. Tmathil al-Arab kulhum. Anta inshallah batkoon bidayat انطلاقت رحلات طويلة المدى للفضاء بالنسبة للعرب تذكر دائما كلمة سيدي صاحب سمو الشيخ محمد بن زايد أن الوطن وشعب الإمارات كله معك 
اتذكر كذلك ان بهاي المهمه نحن نجسد توجيهات سيدي صاحب السمو الشيخ محمد بن راشد ان بعد هزاع المنصوري ان هناك سوف تكون طوابير تستكمل مهمه طموح زايد. نتمنى لكم ولفريقك كل التوفيق، الله يحفظكم وترجعون سالمين الى ارض الوطن. I wish you all safe and successful mission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ahmad, and thank you, Kathy. And we couldn't agree more. There is no better highlight than welcoming our friends to the International Space Station. And so congratulations with that to the SpaceX team, to the NASA team, and also to the team at the UAE. Uh, we're looking forward to the next few months that we get to spend with our friends, and it's going to be awesome. And with that, I'll pass it off to the uh, ISS commander, Sergey. Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm so glad to uh, hear uh, our friends, uh, and uh, it, this is amazing uh, to see your smile uh, here, and uh, we're looking forward to work together. And uh, uh, Steve, uh, Sultan, Andrei, uh, Udi, I, my congratulations uh, for joining us, and uh, uh, first of all, I uh, uh, say uh, congratulate uh, the uh, who first time in space. Uh, this is uh, uh, an important part of your life. Uh, Andrei uh, became cosmonauts, uh, uh, Udi and uh, Sultan astronauts, uh, real astronauts now, <laughs> and uh, I wish you. Uh, good wellness here and uh, happy flight and uh, amazing impressions here uh, looking forward to work together and uh, uh, my congratulations again okay and now uh, we pass it off to the crew six commander steve bowen It's great to be on board finally after a, a short delay just outside taking a look at the station, I guess. Uh, it's a real privilege to be here again. It's been 11 years since I've been here. It's, it still looks like the space station, maybe a little more crowded, a little more, a few more wires. I'm looking forward to... Uh, same Koichi, that is true. It is the same Koichi. Looking forward to uh, spending the next six months working on board uh, and uh, sending Crew 5 home after uh, a lot of well-deserved for a well-deserved rest, that's just some hard work. And over to Woody. Well, thank you. It's just incredible to be here as a rookie flyer. I just can't believe, you know, after years of training, it's it's the real place. And it looks just like, uh, almost just like <laughs> Building 9 at Johnson Space Center. So, uh, yeah, just I couldn't be happier with this amazing uh, Crew 6, an amazing group of people, and I'm really honored and privileged to join Expedition 68. Frank, we're looking forward to spending a bit more time with you than you had originally bargained. We're going to learn a lot from you. And uh, I'm just so happy to be here. Luckily, I survived the first stunt. <laughs> yeah, uh, allow me to say a few words in Arabic. Shukran jazilan li kill min wogaf maana. Alhamdulillah, we saw the mahatat fada dualiya. Shukran li ummi wabuy. Shukran li ayati li qiyadatna Rashid li. أعطتنا الثقة هذه اللهم لك الحمد الإمارات تخطو خطوات جبارة إن شاء الله تتلوها خطوات أكبر إن شاء الله في المستقبل هذا كله بفضل القيادة الرشيدة ونظرتها والتعاون الدولي اللي تتبع دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة الفضاء مجال واسع مرحب طبعا بالتعاون الدولي الإمارات تخطو خطوات جبارة في هذا المجال اللهم لك الحمد شراكتنا هذه المرة جاءت في سياق أن نقوم بمهمة طويلة الأمد فيها منفعة للبشرية ومنفعة للإنسانية وكذلك الأبحاث العلمية إن شاء الله ترجع بالمنفعة للجميع. So thank you everybody for this opportunity. I would like to thank my family, my parents, the leadership in the UAE, the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center that gave me the trust to. To, to conduct this mission. Uh, I can't be happier than this. I mean, seeing old friends uh, in space, gathering as, as a big family, this is the essence of uh, space exploration. The UAE is taking uh, great steps towards uh, pushing the boundaries of exploration and uh, uh, cooperating with the uh, uh, space-faring nation to uh, explore more, 
to uh, uh, seek new endeavors into space. So uh, again, I said it before, but I say it again, go Dragon, go SpaceX. <laughs> Ну что ж, всем большой-большой привет. Я очень рад э, видеть, быть здесь, во-первых, ну и, соответственно, видеть и ваши тоже экипаж, и Союза, и экипаж э, Крю-5, улыбающиеся лица, которые рады нас здесь были встретить. Вот. Спасибо большое всем за подготовку, всем, кто так или иначе принимает участие вообще во всей этой большой работе Международной космической станции. Ну и, конечно, хочу передать привет своей семье, своей маме, своим близким. Большое спасибо за все, что вы для меня тоже сделали, за крайние дни, за поздравления. Ну и обязательно хочу сказать тоже большое спасибо всем тем, кто помогал и помогает до сих пор сейчас еще моей семье. Не бросать их там. Всем привет. Я все. All right, guys, once again, welcome. And with that, Kathy, over to you. Well, thank you again for all the hard work. Um, and I, you know, it's so, it's so great to see all 11 of you there representing so many different countries because um, like all of you talked about, this is what it's like about space exploration for us all to be working together, living and working peacefully in space. So. Thank you. Looking forward to all the great accomplishments that will be coming and uh, looking to get Crew 5 safely home. Appreciate it. All right, that'll wrap it. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Houston ACR, we copy. Thank, Thank you. you, Station. We are now resuming operational audio communications. Station. This is Mission Control Houston, the welcoming ceremony having been completed and the International Space Station's population having grown to 11 for the next week. The uh, crew uh, will set out now to uh, conduct a mandatory and customary safety briefing uh, to uh, be conducted by Station Commander Sergei Prokopiev so that they can uh, become familiar with uh, evacuation routes, if, should that become necessary and other uh, evacuation and emergency procedures. The crew has uh, a lot of work that lies ahead over the next several hours, and then we'll have an off-duty day uh, for the remainder of the day on Friday before continuing their handover activities as Crew 5 now takes center stage to prepare for its return to Earth late next week. With that, uh, we're going to wrap up our coverage. Crew 6 safely on board the International Space Station beginning their six-month stay on the International Outpost. Docking occurring at 12.40 a.m. Central Time. The hatch is opened about uh, two hours and five minutes later, and 11 crew members now set out uh, for a handover period over the next week. Work continues unabated on board the International Space Station. We thank you for joining us throughout the course of the day and evening and throughout the course of Cruise 6's journey to the International Space Station. With that, we'll sign off for now. Have a great weekend. This is Mission Control Houston.